one indicator that exists is the fact that, or would you deny that there is anti-Asian hatred sen uh, uh, sentiment across this? No, 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 I would not deny that. Right. So, whoa, 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 from who? <laughs> who? Who's who's got? From people who are using what? Um, who are attacking uh, Asian people? What do you mean? Who's attacking Asian? Anybody? Wait, what? Is this the first time you've heard this? The the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes, especially like starting under Trump with all of his vilification, saying that this is like uh, the Kung flu and this is coming from China and all of a sudden there's just, like a spike in Asian hate crimes. What? How, how have you not heard about this? You all watched this, didn't you? I'm, I'm going to be the only one here who hasn't seen this. All, all of you are going to be like, oh yeah, no, we finished that. I mean, right now, sure. Yeah. So I, I think that's a failing of the need. And uh, it's why, you know, people were tweeting me like, why aren't you talking about Buffalo? People I mean, but me also, but also like, I'm not talking about Milwaukee. Either. Also, the, the media basically reacts to the, re the media reacts with coverage based on what an audience is interested in. Like if, if there was massive interest in one of those stories that they covered, again, they all covered those stories that you brought up and said that there was no coverage of. But um, it's like local outlets and, and, and no, like no, corporate press. No, we're talking about CNN and NBC News, um, CBS they, 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 News, ABC News. I saw them all. Those are the are most the prime mainstream. time guys, they're not doing news cycle segments. Prime time guys. You're talking about cable news? Well, you said CNN. Well, so I'm referencing. No, I'm talking about CNN, like CNN.com. Yeah, yeah, News websites do the story. Right. So right. why is it that we don't have a national conversation around these other instances? I mean, I'm pretty Tim sure they're really mad at the first history, half of this. I'm pretty sure I've seen at least one uh, uh, special on the issue. I on, think like, the issue CNN is actually something. conservatives are all reactive. You know, so they wait for something to come out and then they start quote tweeting people. And it's just like Kyle Rittenhouse was trending. And it's just like because people on the left started saying it and then the right started responding to it. And that's how you get certain stories being elevated. Sure. Okay, but um, let's let's talk about. Oh, we, you 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 mentioned how what he uh, classified his identity as, right? And yeah, he I said never, he was an off left populist or something, former communist. Uh, right, former. Right. Um, he well, also still in the former. left. Quadrant. Still in the left. I'm well, not gonna take his word for it, mind you. Well, that's the thing, right? You can't take his word for it. Right. I but would. but in your video, you you I mean, you constantly hedge back and forth on. He definitively said that, but and the media lied about it, is my point. Good like call when it. they say he's a Republican, the dude says he's not. You can't just say he's the other guy. Well, well, what 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 left wing politicians are advocating for anything that he's mentioned? In terms of uh, immigration or anything like that, do you mean like general identitarianism? No, 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 I'm talking about specifically what this guy said. The reason why he did what he did. So do you know? Do you know why? Uh, so first, I think the obvious answer is none. Right. Uh, well, I mean, technically, the answer is all of them. Uh, it, it, like his motivation well, is that's that two different, two different answers. Right. So, so I, I'll, I, I will clarify. Sure. When you have like all the presidential candidates on the Democrat stage raising their hands, saying, Matt Binder got a phone call on his show multiple times from Tim Pool fans. Actually, wait, how would that work? How would they have his number? All interesting and maybe one worth looking at. Anyways, just an idea about how he does this. Well, oh, I know why he demands to have these conversations in person at the compound exclusively for the left, but he doesn't do that for right wingers like Ben Shapiro. He'll just go via Zoom call and talk to them because he wants this to be like a home field advantage thing. He wants him to have a, a person right beside him with a computer who can constantly try and debunk all these like weird leftist claims and he wants to have someone else who can actually like step in every now and then and be like well actually i need to i need to talk to you about this uh he makes he takes calls uh like the majority report oh okay interesting do you have it and moratorium on border crossings and you know free health care for non-citizens that is policies put forth that motivate him to do the things he's doing so he so he claims not that i believe him right this guy's clearly a lunatic but yeah so the policies that are being enacted by democrats are the ones he takes issue with sure yeah okay so but we we should not kowtow to a madman's beliefs and rantings based on what he wants to see and go put well, that burden on would. other people right no i don't think we would yeah. yeah we lock the guy up good yeah throw away the key um he said in his manifesto also that he uh, you can call me an ethno-nationalist uh he said that if you called him a neo-nazi that would be fine mm -hmm. and uh, another area he said he mocked leftists and said you're a bigot racist xenophobe nazi fascist as if we're calling him that yeah and he said okay and um and you know he also he's an identitarian he also, um, when it comes to leftism, leftism results in a degenerate, hateful society to non-whites. He's an identitarian. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Leftism results in a degenerate, hateful society, period. And then he continues, um, and then he went on for something else where it said, to non-whites on white lands, leave while you still can. Those were two separate sentences. Yeah, yeah. First of all, he's a, he's a dangerous psychopath who should be locked up. Um, you know, how we deal with these, preventing them in the future is, is a serious challenge right. our country is going to try to have. But uh, here's, here's my point. Go ahead, yeah. we're, we're a fairly anti-identitarian show. I mean, like, we're overtly anti-identitarian. That's like a core, like one of the core elements. Why is Jack uh, and so one of your most frequent guests? why I oppose guests. the rise in identitarianism from the Democrats and in schools and all that stuff. Because when you tell racial groups to form groups based on race, you get white identitarianism along with black identitarianism. And then you get these psychopaths. Okay. Like, this, is, this has been the concern that, you know, people like me and, like, uh, um, Carl Benjamin— other anti-identitarian. Oh, He's okay. like staunchly anti-identitarian. Right. Right. So if you want to talk about those who are speaking out against it, there was a meme back in, I think it was like 2016 or even sooner, where it was talking about how uh, what, we would not, what we refer to back then as like intersectionality was advocating for racial groups to join together 
the only natural conclusion would be white racial groups agreeing. And we don't want that. We don't want uh, majoritarian based racial violence. We don't want racial violence at all. So what we need to encourage is, you know, integration and diversity. But when you have like non POC POC events, when you have like Seattle library doing uh, DEI, like non POC and POC different rooms for libraries, you are telling all of the white people to go into a room. You actually had in the Sacramento Unified School District, they wait. Is he actually trying to use the the rationale that like the the cause of people who become you know violent white supremacist terrorists that it happens to do with schools having like group meetups and stuff, and that there are like orgs and, and in those schools where they're like, okay, uh, this is like a black study group for us to feel more safe because we don't really feel safe for whatever reason, and and that is creating this. Like that, that is just utterly absurd. Like what a weird rationale. He, he was very clear about what he thought was happening and why he needed to do something about this. Encouraged kids are to you, form are, are, white are, are, racial are, identity groups. Are, are you arguing that uh, like a library having a, a people of color space is like something that we shouldn't do because of something like this? Let me ask you uh, to answer your question. <laughs> sure. Uh, if you tell non-white people to go in one room, who goes into the other room? Wait, say this again. 100 people walk to a library of all different races. One room says this. POC. One room says non-POC. All of the people who are not, uh, who, are, who are people of color go into that room. What is the race of the people that all gather together? Okay, by the way, that like, okay, I, I, I went to college. I guess I went to a, a liberal indoctrinating institution that turned me into a postmodern neo-Marxist, right? Uh, there were multiple groups that would set up and they would be like, hey, by the way, uh, we are a LGBTQ plus friendly study group. If you would like to come join, uh, please come here. And then for the most part, a lot of them were like, we also welcome people from other groups. We just don't really feel like we have representation. So we're going to do this uh, because it makes us feel safe and we want to meet other people who are also like-minded, you know, allies welcome kind of stuff. That, that that is not what inspires white supremacist shooters. That's that. Like, what are you saying right now, Tim? That that is utterly absurd. In the other room. Like, sure, you're going to say that it's white, correct? I'm not going to say that's what it is, isn't yeah, it? Sure. So when you have a room that says white, you know, that says non like, non POC and your, POC, you're telling all the white there. people to go into a room together. You, uh, what do you think is going to happen job. when you get a bunch of white people together? Uh, start telling them that they're wait, oppressors. You're, you're, or, you think this is happening in a? Wait, who's calling anyone an oppressor? You're talking about something that's happening in a library. That's not happening in everyday life. That's not happening in. We're not talking. We're not walking through the world doing this. What do you like? I'm, I'm confused as to what your anecdote <laughs> here is supposed to be. This is so uh, weird. Sense. Let me give you. Let me see if I can find the, the exact source. So it's happening all over the place. It's happened in Dearborn. It's happened in Seattle. It's happened in Florida. It's happened. Happened in. Um, look, I think Colin Wright's got it. If I pull up on Twitter, it happened in Sacramento to an extreme degree. Uh, so here we go. Uh, let me just pull it up. Racial affinity groups. This was uh, uh, from the anti-racist classroom, Sacramento City Unified School District, that argued that white students should form white racial affinity groups. Would you agree with that? White students should form white, white racial affinity groups? Yeah. This is such a gotcha. Why? So this is anti-racism, though. I mean, I don't agree with that. So th so, so I think we, I think then we agree. My, my concern is that... Well, what, what, you, what, what is a white racial affinity group? They tell all the white <laughs> kids to go together. And let, let me read it for you. Make sure we get the full context. Racial affinity groups offer a structure of inquiry and can address many needs. They support us in exploring what has been forbidden, forgotten, and unhealed. For example, in racial affinity groups, white people can discover together their group identity. They can cultivate racial solidarity and compassion and support each other in sitting with the, with the discomfort, confusion, and numbness that often accompany white racial awakening. They can also discern white privilege and its impact without the aid of or dependence on people of color. Oh, that's a white, bit different than what I... What, 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 white people who have formed <laughs> racial affinity groups report that they the recognize their coll it. collective commonality and shared history, as well as the impact that their privilege has had on other races hmm. and on each racial affinity group. It sounds member. very confusing. Sure, and then it seems like if that's the case, then they would then go out into society and um, treat people of color in a way that they weren't treated before, treat them better. Do you think that's what white people <laughs> yeah. talk about when they talk about their shared history? I just want to see what they say about the white racial awakening... He doesn't know how to answer. No, wait, what was that? Freedom Tunes is a saint for sitting there quiet. Patience is a king. Fund infertility. <laughs> this guy's so ignorant, it kills me. I mean, at least they're not straight up saying anything, like, outside of, uh, you know, uh, this guy doesn't get it. How they treat people better? Or do you think they talk if, about... If, if, they're, if they're getting together in an anti-racist group, then yeah, I do. So if you took a bunch of white people and put them... Because in I could tell you that the shooter's not going to an anti-racist affinity group. So this is, this is anti-racist classroom, a program for right. schools. Yes. They're not going to the students and saying... We're having. We're, they're saying we're having white. When you explain, when, when you're not just having. You're not letting them sit down and start talking about white power. You're sitting them sitting them down and you're guiding a discussion into what white privilege is. And what do you think happens when a group of young Tigwick, white kids? Thank you. Uh, sit down that. and talk about white history. What do you think they do? What do you, what do you think they say to Tigwick each other? Tigwick gave you talk about Lucasio what sort of, do, you, do you think they say things like, "Man, we're awful," or do you think they, they say things like, "Lee Ferrix is who, awesome"? Who, who's who's they probably don't say either. <laughs> 
<laughs> those, are, those are just general no, references. But, 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 right, <laughs> the ones you gave me. Um, no one. Right, right, right. My point is, do you think they're speaking positively or negatively about their history? Neither. They're just discussing. Why does it be positive or negative? Are they talking about slavery? Or are they talking about colonization? <laughs> talking about slavery or colonization? What are they talking about? Do you think? Well. If, they, <laughs> if this is in a classroom with being guided by a teacher, correct? A white racial affinity group. I, I don't know if it actually says the teacher would be discussing. I think it's, it's telling the kids to form a group. If it gives people. them, and if it gives it them. Says, it says they can cultivate. I would assume it's, it's unled. Well, I don't, I, you can't assume that. We have to know. Well, I, um, I also don't think that if you get a whole bunch of white kids together, they start talking about Leif Erikson. Or they start talking about, <laughs> they probably just start talking I'm not about saying they're literally talking about Leif Erikson. Yeah, I mean, these are two very separate things. And I think Matt Bender is doing a good job of trying to ascertain what exactly Tim's implication is here and what is he trying to say. Because, yeah, it would be one thing if there was a group uh, in order to uh, basically explain concepts that I think liberals are doing a really bad job of explaining, right? Like, we saw how the quartering reacted to pamphlets being handed out uh, or potential pamphlets being handed out at the workplace where it says, hey, by the way, uh, you have privileges. And if you don't understand these privileges, then you aren't aware of how you have advantages over others in society, right? Uh, and then the quartering and was right away defensive as fuck and just being like, oh, fuck. Yeah, try telling that to like uh, a working class white person that they have privileges. Like if they're poor as fuck, they came from a broken home, that they have privilege. And I was like, okay, well, you can see already the disconnect we're having here and why the this way of trying to teach this subject is really uh, uh, fucking with, uh, you know, uh, people's fragility. Um, what uh, what should be explained, and I think uh, there would be a better way of uh, trying to talk about it, is that 100% you can be oppressed. Most people are oppressed in one way or another for a variety of different things. Uh, you can be oppressed for being a poor person in America, and it's going to be harder for you if you're a poor person than if you're a white person under capitalism. That's the way the structure works. It's going to be even harder if you're a black person and poor, in, in addition to that, uh, because of the way the society uh, treats the artificial construction of race. Um, and that sucks. Uh, that like That's brutal it's an intersectional problem uh you know it'll, it'll be harder if you are a poor black woman uh for example it doesn't mean in any way that there is these oppression olympics and that everyone is trying to collect as many things as they can it's like well how many things do i have like fucking liberal uh, shit is really bad for this buzzfeed was doing what is your uh oppression ranking of course people are going to push back against that and be like what is this fucking nonsense because it's like uh yeah, people can feel like they're having a really hard time, a really bad thing in life, uh, and they don't suddenly feel like they have a magical superpower just because they're white, because a whole bunch of other things are happening, you know? Uh, and, and to suddenly say that, like, you have to collect all your privileges, you know, like they're Pokemons, and then really uh, acknowledge everyone when you wake up in the day, uh, so you know how to treat people better in society. Like, again, this isn't going to help people's material conditions. This isn't going to help, uh, you know, end racism. Uh, if people are doing this weird performative thing where it's just like, well, uh, 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 hello, everybody. Uh, I'd just like to say upon entering this room that I need to acknowledge that I am white. And uh, part of me acknowledging that I'm white is I'm also going to apologize to each and every one of you for your own uh, condition because I have privileges that you do not have. And I, I recognize those privileges. Don't worry. I'm a good white person. And uh, on top of that, um, in addition to Tim's weird idea that there's going to be some need for like a solidarity uh, for uh, white students uh, to be able to feel f uh, proud about being white. Uh, it completely overlooks the fact that, like, first off, whiteness isn't real, and what is white has been used throughout history to other other groups in order to uh, uh, subjugate them. Uh, to justify their subjugation in that I am superior to you because I am white and so that's why it justifies things like enslavement or genocide uh, and so there's nothing wrong with them being say proud Americans or or again proud Irish kids or, or, or proud uh, uh, proud Italian kids um, in that classroom uh, and identified as such but saying like I'm a proud member of the white race and I want to talk about the other accomplishments that white people have done especially in upholding western civilization and let's talk about white celebrities and let's talk about white blah 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 you're really playing into some weird white supremacist shit there Okay, but they don't be obtuse. Okay, without any without any sort of um, guidance, they're probably not talking about anything political at all. They're probably talking about what's going on in school. They're probably you, talking about what happened at the, at the at the cafeteria or whatever. Do you think they're wondering why it is they've been separated from the other kids of different races? Probably not, because they was explain to them what the the purpose of the uh, the anti racist classroom group is. Do you think any of these kids have friends who are not? I live in Africa. I'm kind of white. What race am I? I'm going to assume Caucasian. White, probably. Yeah. You, what do you think they ask about why they can't sit with their friends? My, po my point with group? all this being like a, is that. Race isn't real. 
we made it up. There's no such thing between, there's no difference in humanity, right? There's no difference between the races. There, there, there's no biological reason for there to exist categories known as race. And if you really want to understand how that happens, look at how people change uh, what their racial characterization is based on, uh, like, Barack Obama. He's considered black, but he's actually half white. Why is that? Well, uh, I think that is pretty self-evident. Uh, you know, I'm I'm white. My mom's indigenous, but I'm white. I, I will have every advantage in society in being able to deal... Uh, 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 more easily with cops in this country uh, because they won't look at me and just assume, oh yeah, that 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 uh, you know that guy might have some uh, you know indigenous ancestry in his blood. Uh, you know, we we better we better test him uh, for alcohol blood levels because uh, you know we're going to be racist towards indigenous people, right? It, it's all about that. It's it's yeah, it's it, it's one hundred percent made up. But the way we treat people, broadly speaking, in society isn't. That's the fucked up thing. So that's that's the reason why, even though race doesn't exist, there's no such thing as race, we will treat people differently in society based on uh, the, the categories of race. What, a 45-minute class or 30-minute class, whatever? Oh. It's not like they're not being segregated for life. They're, it's, a, it's a project. It's a class. So would you agree with racial segregation in schools in some capacity? No, that's not what this is. But if only white kids are in this group and other kids aren't allowed in it, would that be racial segregation? This is I'm not Caucasian at all. Oh, so yeah, then why would you say that you're white? a specific class to talk about white privilege. Right, so in some circumstances, would you allow for only white people to be in the classroom? That's not what this is. Okay, okay, hold on. This is a white racial affinity group, as it says, right? It says that it's an anti-racist classroom. I can't read okay. it. I can't, it's too far for me. Unfortunately, I don't have the computer in front it's, of me. Uh, it's, uh, so white people can discover their group identity. I, in, so it's, in, it's the, not, in the it, context, it, it specifically mentions people of color. It specifically mentions multiple times white privilege. Sure, 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 sure. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing. But uh, I mean, you know what white privilege is, right? Right, right. But oh, this so is you one of project segregation. projection. No, that's not what this is. Okay, hold on. It says without yeah. dependence on people of color. Tim, I know what you're trying to do. No, 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 I'm not trying to do anything. I know, but I, <laughs> you're trying to do something. What am I trying to do? The fact <laughs> remains that a school created a program where only white kids would be allowed, and you're okay with it. Now, if you don't have the balls to say you're okay with it, fine. Don't say it. Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay when a teacher tells the boys to line up on one side of the classroom and girls line up on the other side of the classroom? Yes. Why wouldn't I be? Of course. So why wouldn't you be okay with this? Racism. It's not racism. <laughs> the other thing is in sexism. Segregate. Well, yeah, because the we tell boys and girls, do you, we tell boys and girls to use different bathrooms. That's fine. It would not be fine to tell black kids and white kids to use different bathrooms. Right. It's not a fair comparison. Oh, but that's not what we're doing here. We're not asking black kids or white kids to use separate bathrooms. No, but your point, you're, you're trying to make it Bro, sound I as if gender, is it the difference between the sexes is comparable I, I, to the differences look, look, between care, racial dude. groups. Telling a bunch of white kids to get together without other kids of other races is racist, and I, I'm not for it. I'm not for it. But they're specifically discussing. I don't care what they're discussing. Racism. I don't think you should be allowed in schools to say whites only. I think that's wrong. I don't care what they're saying. That you just jumped to something completely. Bro, it literally says without the aid of people of color. What do you think that means? Okay, you could like be, you could bro, be you could be in Seattle. They said non POC only. What do you think that means? In California, they had a proposition to remove their civil rights provision from their own constitution, allowing yeah, he did say gender. Um, oh, that was a slip. We're literally you you're bringing up other things that are completely different now. We're talking about this one specific class that I don't find a problem with, to be quite honest. If this okay, is a so one only time, white kids are allowed, if, right? If, to, in the context, he's basically of this, saying yes, this is the exact same as segregation. Okay, that's fine. discussion with right I'm not, We're not arguing. You're agreeing, and I'm assuming that in another classroom, people of what color is, are sharing their shared experiences too, as people of color. What is segregation? And then, and then, and, and then, but we're not, we don't have to go back into segregation. We're just talking about this one specific classroom. I'm against segregation in terms of a school for whites and a school for blacks, but in terms of this one specific class. I think it's fine. I think it's fine. If you don't like it, that's fine too. I think this is a really uh, unproductive discussion. We've had both of our opinions. So this both is on the record. We're both probably, I'm assuming you are, we're both against segregation in terms of a school for blacks and a school for whites. I am under the impression that this is, from what you're telling me, an anti-racist class, a one-time class discussion on white privilege. And I think it's fine. It's that simple. I don't think we need to opine on this more. If you do, I don't know what else to say about it, to be quite frank. I'm giving you exactly how I feel. That's what you want, right? I'm telling you how I feel. Let me, uh, let me see if I can pull up the uh, Seattle one. Apparently, when he got to Tim Pool's compound after introductions, Tim immediately started cleaning his swords, <laughs> polishing the blade. <laughs> it's hard to get the precise language. Uh, well, yeah, the virtual cafes. At, this is, uh, yeah, this is ridiculous false equivalency. Reaffirring our commitment. Did you hear this story? And, and when he's trying to use it as a gotcha. Digital, digital, uh, trying to be like, oh, look, white, Matt Bender supports segregation. They call it non-POC and POC only. See, I think that's wrong. And okay. uh, what's, what's, your, what's, your, what's your racial background? My racial background? Yeah. I'm white. I know you are mixed race. Yeah. So for me, I think my, my perspective comes from... You're multiracial. Yep. I come from a family mm -hmm. that dealt with segregation. And they told me exactly what you're agreeing with is exactly what they were scared of. And so when I'm like desperately being like, this is crazy, you're like, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. And then I'm like looking back at the stories from my grandpa and my parents, and they're like, this is the scariest thing we've seen in a long time. And then you just don't care. I didn't say I don't care. Well, no, no, no I'm saying... <laughs> I, I, just, I, just, I, just said, I just I just learned about this I now. I just said specifically to talk about white privilege and anti-racism. I think in that context, it's fine. That specific context. I think yeah, I, I just... I think we disagree on that. So the same argument they made and the same argument they make today.
It's, wait, it's, wait, it's, wait, 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 so schools were segregated back in like the 50s because uh, they were separate. Separate but equal. They were separating the whites to talk about white privilege and anti-racism action. They were, they like were, they were justifying action. the separation on some kind of physical or academic terms or like cultural terms. Like there was a justification for why it was okay this time, but it was never okay. It was never okay to say one place for one race. One, it was never okay. Right. It's still not That's okay. Not <sighs> Tim is white passing. Well, like I'm multiracial too. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'll fully acknowledge that I have all the same white privilege. Uh, and so that's why it's like, if, if I had to take the uh, blood quantum machines test, right, it would be like, well, it turns out you're half uh, Métis, half Catalonian lance. That's your, you know, genetic makeup or whatever. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's multiracial for sure. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a piece of paper, if you were to ask what multiracial is, you'd write it there. But like, Am I treated differently in society, broadly speaking, in, in in cases where someone who is very visibly indigenous would be treated completely differently by the police, for example? Yes, absolutely. That that's what the acknowledgement of the uh, of this entire like race is made up is about. What this is? It's just a simple class to discuss this issue. I don't see the problem with it, quite honestly. And I Cause, think because is it is because you have white privilege? Oh yes, of course I do. So you're wrong, and you're as you as a white man have white privilege and don't understand why it's bad no, 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 to no, tell. No, no, no. I don't think that's what white privilege is. I, I actually have a problem with the word privilege because mm -hmm. I think yes, for so people, seems like you're one of them. For a lot of people, they view that word privilege as something that's being looked at them negatively, and it's just not. It's just not. I view white privilege as there are things in my life that like here's even a better way of putting it. If you are a white person and everything has gone wrong for you in terms of you know, you're homeless and you can't get a job and you'll be the most unluckiest person on the face of the planet, it likely did not happen to you because you were white. That's all it is. That's all it is. Whereas if you see a black homeless person who can't get a job, can't, you know, uh, the, you know the, uh, things have happened in their life to get to, they've lost their home, there's a good chance that their race, being black, uh, had part to do in that, had part to do in their situation. That's all that is. It's not a positive or negative. And if you, understand that if you understand that there are certain things that have not happened to you because you're white then you understand what black people or uh, you know uh, latino people or asian americans go through that you just haven't had to go through it's not a negative or positive just I, understanding I, how other people go through life that's all it is it's not well, a negative thing to understand you have white privilege it's we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna jump to the super chats that weren't deleted i apologize everybody when you, you i don't know why um we've had way more super chats than this in the past but it just all of a sudden went and they were gone but uh my, my attitude I'll, I'll give you one last thought on like, but we also we also didn't we also didn't talk about the shooting though. We just didn't talk about. Let's it. let's 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 do that for the member segment. I know we're making everybody stay a little mm. bit late, but uh, we'll we'll get that one up. I feel like that's important stuff. I mean, I know you. I know, but, members, but we're like we're half an hour over already. <sighs> all right, you know all right. I mean? And all the, right. Right. the last thing I want to say is, um, I feel like when you have a, a school that is predominantly run by wealthy uh, elites, you know, Sa Sa Sacramento, San Francisco tends to be California. I think is like overwhelmingly white. Then they create a classroom where they say, "Come on, all the white kids are going to come in, and we're going to talk about privilege." And they talk about how much privilege they are and, and the things they have over other races. I think the likely outcome is going to be a bunch of white kids hearing that they have better things, that they've done better, that through their history they've achieved or taken more than other races. What would they say? I mean, that sounds like what they're going to tell the kids. I mean, I, 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 I think someone should talk to these kids who took, partook in this class and see what they learned. I mean, that's, I mean, we're just, I mean, I, I'm not saying what they learned in there. I'm just going by what the class says. I the just, class is, I think, you're I pontificating think, I think, about what they possibly took out of it. I haven't done any of that. Well, I just think that if you take a bunch of white people and tell them to go to a room by themselves to talk about privilege, they're not going to have a negative conversation about themselves. Like, oh, you put it really, really well. Here, this is a, a really good quick definition. White privilege means your skin color didn't make your life harder, but it doesn't mean you had an easy life. This is not one of the uh, additional things that would be uh, oppressing you, broadly speaking, in society. If I ask, a bunch I, I'm of, going to seriously. Let me ask. You, I'm me going ask you. to seriously. I mean, again, I can't. Uh, this is me pontificating. No, 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 no. I'm going to assume that if you tell kids to do that sort of thing in a class, that there is a teacher or some sort of I don't know anti-racist advocate, someone leading the class and helping these children along in taking part in this activity. That's what I'm going to assume. We should find. We should find out. We should contact the school and find out how this went. Ask if we could talk to. If uh, we, we could uh, send some questions that the children, the, school, the kids, these how old are these kids? How old it's, it's a great school, so kindergarten it, yeah. through to eighth. Maybe have them do, answer what they learned. Do, like just if, a paper, if, just a if, little. What what if I what if I did like an event and it was called like um, leftist affinity, and it was to have a conversation around all of the horrible things that leftists had done throughout the past several hundred years and to understand their privilege. Do you think if I brought <laughs> in you, a bunch you, of? You didn't listen to anything what I said. Just said about white privilege, though. It's not that. It's not, that's not what it is at all. <laughs> okay. So if I if you, do you think that if I took a bunch of people of any group and put them in a room, they would talk critically? It's wild because Tim talks about so many of these topics, and he doesn't know the definition of a lot of these words. Like when he was talking about critical race theory with Vosh, uh, and just so poorly defined it, uh, and then clearly he he had to learn in real time what it actually was. I think the same thing is happening right now with white privilege. About themselves or talk 
positively about themselves. I mean, four, four of us are in here right now, right? And we're just having a regular conversation. And I mean, clearly I will not accept, you know. Uh, I mean, a really easy response to that is is that like um, you aren't born a leftist. Do you get that, Tim? You know, <laughs> like it's broadly speaking, not the same as being like, I don't know, black in America. Like, I'm like, this is what I know to be true. This is what's right. You say the same thing. Seamus says the same thing. So my attitude is, and I, and I don't want to go in circles, so we'll go to Super Chats, but, and I'll give you, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to take the final word. But my point is, I think if you try to do your best and tell a bunch of white people to keep forming groups or to go in, or to have like rooms that are only for white people or like, like Dearborn did, like they did in the library, I think it was in Seattle, like the school's doing, like we've seen in a bunch of other states, like in Atlanta, they did it. The, the, the principal took the black kids out. Like you're, you're, you're telling people to segregate, whether it's like harsh segregation or not, you're, you're. He specifically doesn't like this, I think, because it's an easy target because it's a course about like race and racism <laughs> and and that like for some reason is now being broadly uh you know tapped into all the rest of this making the problem worse and you'll end up with deep racists that's why I mean, I we should we should we should find out what these things actually do we should actually do a legitimate study ask these uh students who took part in this whether you know first second third it's high school we should ask them what they got out of these sort of courses what they got out of this anti-racist classroom i think that'd be very interesting to find out i think we should encourage people of all races to get together and have a conversation with each other but uh let's but what if what if what if these kids <laughs> answer oh that was such a cheap shot that's so low Clean up your room. <laughs> that's fucking garbage tier are you telling like I wow okay I'm I'm not surprised him this I told you it was set up as a gotcha the whole thing set up as a gotcha and then afterwards he can start doing this moral grandstanding fucking concern trolling all of a sudden I don't know I just uh, I did, don't think that uh, segregation should be a thing but I mean clearly you do for some reason and they say this was a very the, the white uh, kids and the people of color Vorp, said, thank you very much this was a very positive thing we went through villains. and it actually made our relationship with our you know the white kids say our relationship with our black friends because is better black kids say their relationship with their white friends are better what if that was what they found and got out of this what would you you know so, would you, so what would you think this is what I was told it was like pre-1964 that plus E.V. Ferguson, like Derek Bell's argument, that uh, Derek Bell, uh, the critical race. A lot of marginalized groups are tired as fuck of having to teach white people stuff like this. Like, there's there's so many times, and because like this, obviously, you know, everything is a learning process. Everyone has to come to these terms. And yeah, there's definitely something to be said about not being as aggressive to every single person who doesn't have, like, you know, your levels of understanding. And this is not by, you know, marginalized people or white people. I'm, I'm talking about um, when white people are trying to, to, to learn these things um, and, uh, you know, someone uh, is, is trying to have a conversation, like family members, for example, definitely had flip outs at family members. And then there's times when I have to sit back and realize you don't know nearly as much about maybe some trans issues as I do. Because if I'm trying to explain this to you and I'm trying to explain how uh, it's not uh, abuse in any way to, uh, you know, do uh, a gender reassignment uh, therapy for kids, uh, I'll get all the usual points. I'll be like, no, it's a child abuse. They cut off their like dicks and tits and it's blah, blah, blah. And like, you know, you know it's ideology. And it, it, it like, you're like, okay, well, I, if I break this down right now and like I start saying it, and this is me as a cis man, you know, it's not someone as a trans person who's probably had to try and explain this. But like, if you're a trans person trying to explain all of this, especially to like uh, someone who's uh, bigoted in these topics, yeah, that's going to be fucking exhausting because, like, that's your life. You're living this. Uh, like, you know, you're fighting for survival as Republicans are trying to legislate this stuff. Uh, so, yeah, you might want to not have to sit there every day to every person who doesn't have an understanding on this yet and be like, yeah, so uh, I'm valid as a human being, right? Like, that That would really, really suck. This argues Plessy v. Ferguson was correct when it clearly wasn't. And so you actually had people arguing everybody was better off. Critical race theorists have argued that before the end of segregation, the black community had its own economy. And by ending segregation, it forced them under. So what I'm saying to, to everyone watching and listening who has the privilege, why not Why not all of us use our privilege? If you are a cis person, then explain to other cis people why their bigotry towards trans people is completely misguided and why they should actually be helping trans kids because it's actually going to be a net benefit to society to not have kids with gender dysphoria who are going through horrifying experiences to then be continuously vilified on top of everything else for something that is reversible. By the way, puberty blockers are safe, reversible. They're already used on cis children. You may not have known that. They don't get bottom surgery that was a myth propagated by right-wing republicans and guess what it's going to be a better life a better planet a better world for all of us if we stop trying to make their lives worse less dead trans kids sounds fucking amazing doesn't it the white economy which gave the white people power over them 
So those are the kind of conversations they had in the past as to why they. But, segrega but segregation didn't make the relationship between whites and blacks better. I agree. Yeah, I'm saying what if the kids? But they were saying it was. No, 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 no. That's, 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 so read Derek Bell. Like read his thoughts on Plessy v. Ferguson. That's, he argues segregation was a good thing. He's a critical race theorist along with Kimberly Crenshaw. Let, let's read. Uh, let's read. I'm sorry, I apologize, man. I, no, I, it's. You know, yeah, I, I don't, I don't I'm not familiar with that specific uh, thing, but I think if you if we t we should find this is a, a, we should reach out to this school and we should find out yeah, what yeah. The, the kids got out of it in um in in Ferguson and in. Uh, um, uh, St. Louis, Baltimore, Ferguson, obviously in St. Louis, and Baltimore, they were circulating a letter among Black Lives Matter, which was like the writings of Derek Bell and advocating for Plessy v. Ferguson and all that stuff. But we'll try and read as many super chats as we have. Uh, okay. Uh, if you haven't already, smash the like button. We went long because these things happen. We went way long. We'll, uh, we'll, I'll read as many super chats as we have, but I apologize. YouTube deleted them. I, I can try and find a way to, hmm. to, to get them back. I just, I, I might be able to find Weird. another way to get them back. Give me a second. They're in the, uh, the monetization section. Right. That's what I was <laughs> In your YouTube studio. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did you know? <laughs> this, there. This is your job. <laughs> like this, <laughs> this is what you do for a living. Tim Pool is acting like white people are incapable of recognizing and addressing issues within their community without having to perform contrition at the hands. Of, like it's not only that. It's like he's got this weird idea. That this is somehow contributing to them. Uh, the the white kids in particular uh, feeling. Uh, marginalized to be totally honest it's like well why do we have to teach uh, white children specifically about concepts of like white privilege and blah 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 and then it's like well broadly speaking in society most marginalized communities have the lived experience of having to grow up being racially profiled in America so they're very very well aware of what it's like because they live it every single day right so it may be a way of explaining this it could be beneficial I think to explain to all kids of all races genders uh, whatever it is sexualities to explain to all of them the the simple concept of there's most likely going to be uh something uh some societal vector that uh oppresses you and different people have different forms of oppression uh it doesn't mean that again uh, the the white kids in the class have a like a special superpower that no one else has or anything like that this is not supposed to be this is just reflecting the way society broadly speaking works that's that's it you know you, you we're just we're uh we're just reflections pull this up somehow oh yeah okay i have them sweet but they're formatted in a very difficult way that we and there's not all of them says Usually the looting oh, okay you're right, you're right. yeah fair forever, that's right? a fair call yep. out okay cool slow. hey guys good news cool. yeah thanks matt oh, no i'll problem. try to read them <laughs> uh we'll thanks for teaching me how youtube works over and i will try to read these super chats <laughs> this I don't is what know i do when they came in though because um oh yeah are they all day as a job i think i think they're coming in reverse chronological order actually so let me see if I Is can, this uh, the first time you've ever I'm a sound uh, right now. How is this a new process oh, for you? It might be it might be from the beginning. Okay, okay, it is reverse chronological order. Cro reverse chronolo chronological order. All right, Anthony says, citing white privilege is just a way to defer responsibility. If you're poor and white, it's your fault. But if you're poor and non white, it's someone else's fault. No. Wrong. Wrong. If you are poor, it's if you grew up in poverty, yes, under capitalism, you are being oppressed. Like that, that, that is going to be a vector of oppression that you experience. Your life is going to be harder than a rich white family. Or if you have a stable family. If you have a very, very stable family, you're going to have an easier time. Uh, a better time growing up than if you have parents who beat you. If you have parents who sexually molest you. Uh, if you have parents uh, who... Or they don't even have to be bad people. You can have parents who grew up in poverty and struggle to make ends meet. And they don't have time to spend with you. So yes, poverty is a massive thing. You, you can be absolutely oppressed for that. We have to, broadly speaking, uh, you know, change things for, for everyone, including poor white people. At any point, you know, and we'll just keep reading more, I suppose, but unless you have something to say. All right, let's see. Wait, how do you usually do this? You, uh, we could, uh, we read Matt's post controls much, read. much oh, right, Everyone say that. Okay, go ahead. ahead. What was it again? I'm well, sorry. It's not, it's, this one wasn't directed at, at uh, you necessarily, I don't think. It's just a general point. It said, citing white privilege is just a way to defer responsibility. If you're poor and white, it's your fault. But if you're poor and non-white, it's someone else's fault. No, no, no. That's not what it is at all. It's not what it is at all. It's not your fault. It's just that the odds are that whatever you went through in your life, the reason you are uh, econo in economic uh, trouble, the reason it's, it's not because you were white. There were other externalities that caused that issue. That's all. That's all. It's not blaming anybody. All right. Uh, should I read the mean ones? Oh, please. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, why does Sam Cedar with 1.17 million followers only average about 25K likes on his YouTube videos? Sure. By the way, great conversation. I think <laughs> that's actually a good number to get in terms of likes, actually. I don't think that's a bad number. Yeah, it's, it's a decent number, I guess. But also, his show has always been, he, his show was from the, um, his show started in, his show actually started with Gene Garofalo back in, what was it, 2004? Wow. Um, on Air America. It was a radio show, like a terrestrial radio show. And so his audience actually mostly listens to the show via podcast. 
Um, mm -hmm. So those YouTube numbers are mostly from uh, a very specific subsection of his audience. It's a completely mm -hmm. different. He has twenty five k is a good amount of likes. It's it's, a, it's good, yeah. yeah. I mean, like that's what I get. I don't know. Uh, all right, let's see. I don't know if that's accurate. That's what this person's saying. But yeah. Um, yeah. Heather Corrin says, he just proved Tim's point. Some people view this negatively, making race center and calling all white people bad. Constantly, which they do, is going to create more racists of all races, not less. No, what I said was the term privilege, I think, does cause problems. I think we could find a better term for that same exact thing. I think people, for some reason, hear the word privilege and think, oh, you're, you're privileged. That's not what white privilege means. So, you know, I think maybe to uh, it's true, help this and that's like the biggest along, problem. we should find a different uh, terminology for the exact same thing, which is basically just, if you're white, you need to just come to the realization that there are things that people of other races you're just not oppressed for being black white. um latino asian american they go through experiences that you don't because you are white it's not saying you are bad it's just come to that realization you can be going through hardships and troubles there could be things happening to you that are truly horrible and you know unfair but it's not happening to you likely because it's white like for example if the same thing was happening to a black person there is a chance that his race or his or her race did play some role in that hardship or difficulty that they're going through. Can I ask you something? It could. You referenced Asian it can Americans. also not. Why is it that well. basically by every economic indicator that's used to demonstrate white privilege exists, Asians outperform white people? Well, it's not always just economics. I mean, are you denying? But I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying all the indicators you, that exist. Are you, yeah. well, one indicator that exists is the fact that, are, would you deny that there is anti-Asian hatred sen uh, uh, sentiment across this no, country? No, no, I would no, not no, deny no, that there's right. anti-Asian so, hatred. Whoa, 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 From who? <laughs> from who? Who's, who's got? From people who are using, what? Um, who are attacking uh, Asian people. What do you mean? Who's attacking Asian people? Anybody. Wait, what? Is this the first time you've heard this? The the rise in anti-Asian hate crimes, especially like starting under Trump with all of his vilification, saying that this is like uh, the Kung flu and this is coming from China and all of a sudden there's just, like a spike in Asian hate crimes. What? How, how have you not heard about this? Uh, have you seen the PE coach training experiment about privilege? Like kids start at different points and have handicaps and then they run the race. The majority of certain kids with less handicaps surprisingly end up doing better. Um, there's also a really good one for the instruction of how race is arbitrary that really kind of, I think, solidifies it in your mind is... Uh, uh, the the green eye blue eye experiment where they take a, a whole bunch of kids in the class and they separate them distinctly because of if they have green eyes or blue eyes uh, and then they start treating one of the groups way meaner and and vilifying them and saying all these lies about them being like you cannot trust people with blue eyes they're very shady they're very shifty they don't work hard they're lazy they smell worse on average all these kind of things and the kids start breaking down and it's actually quite a few of it's usually white kids who start breaking down because like they, they they haven't really experienced some of the same rhetoric that they're using to distinctly talk about race in the same way we talk about how human beings are different inherently because some of them are white some of them are black even though these are like monolithic terms like there's a lot of different kinds of groupings inside those terms which is ridiculous but yeah it, uh, it, it it's one way that both demonstrates it in real time how it's like a, an unbelievably negative way to treat somebody uh, but also makes people recognize like how arbitrary it is which I thought was uh, was really really interesting and it's been replicated multiple times with adults too with similar results for adults you have examples of this? Sure there's been white people who've done it there's been black people who've done it oh I didn't ask you that I'm asking for the stories about Asian people you brought up race well we're talking about race. We're talking about in the context of race. Yes. Well, I I asked you if, like where is the where are the Asian attacks happen? Oh, in New York. Sure, in California. Well, there, that's where there are uh, major populations of Asian people, right? Who's who's like so? Uh, is is there a reason the Asians are being attacked? Oh yes, because of uh, sentiment via like uh, racism due to COVID nineteen beliefs that it yep. came from China and uh, yep. people. Um, There's also a fuck ton of like you know Instagram posts, TikTok posts where uh, like uh, women were talking about how people are intentionally like not wanting to date them on apps because they're Asian because it's like I don't want to get sick and then she's like I'm and he's like I don't want to get sick with your Chinese flu and then she's like I'm Taiwanese and fuck you I don't have COVID like what the fuck you know tons of shit like that. It was purposely came from China um, or. You know, and they're taking it out on completely innocent Asian Americans. And a lot of the times, uh, they're not even attacking uh, Chinese people, which wouldn't make it right, but they're even wrong on that sense yeah. because they're attacking Korean Americans, they're attacking yep. Japanese Americans. Um, and it's just, it's wrong. And that's something that, uh, for example, Agreed. white people do not experience. They usually do not experience racist attacks like Asian Americans do in the aftermath of the COVID-19 pandemic. But what about in general? Do you think white people experience racist attacks for being white? I'm sure it's happened, but it's not. It's 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 the that's an anomaly. It's not as often as, for example, a black person or a, a Latino is that your, person. Is that your feeling, or is that a fact? I mean, you could look it up. I'm yeah, sure it'd be true. I, I, I mean, we I just had a story. We just had a story about the um, you know, the the ten people who got killed uh, because there was a racist attack in a supermarket against um black people, specifically from the shooter. That's what. Well, sure, sure. Yeah. But how many people died last year in extremist attacks? I don't. I don't we have to look up those stats. Twenty-nine. Okay. According to the Anti-Defamation League. I mean, you had nearly a thousand shootings in Chicago in mass. Like, I think it was like uh, four hundred-ish people died in mass shootings in Chicago the entire 
the entirety of last year. And so it's just like, I, I feel like the conversation about white, white privilege when 20 you don't, people, you don't, you don't think, you, know, you don't think the, 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 the situation in those neighborhoods that have, um, you know, uh, led to what you're describing, you don't think that has anything to do with the historic uh, racism in this country? You don't think those neighborhoods are predominantly, you know, they've maybe been redlined. Um, there's been, um, you know, uh, do you know why they're shooting each other in Chicago? It's different for every reason, right? It's mostly like honor, honor shootings. I mean, like, that's, 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 can you, can you pull up something to, to back that up? I've, I've never even mostly honor shootings. shootings. Like, uh, you diss me, I take your life. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm familiar with that. Do you have any, anything to, I have a, I, we should go through super chats, but I can pull up for you. I actually, sure, did, I actually, yeah. I, uh, that'd be, be really interesting. For sure. one, uh, I'll cite myself as a source as having covered and lived in Chicago for oh. 23 years and uh, actually went night crawling with a couple of journalists. One was like really famous now. And uh, we, we night, you're familiar with night crawling? Yeah. Get the radio, you go, you around. <laughs> have you, and have the, you seen we, the movie? We interviewed uh, <laughs> this uh, crime prevention uh, local in the black crawling. community who was arguing in favor of gun rights, <laughs> but against gun violence. Mm -hmm. And she was talking about one of the misconceptions in Chicago. By the way, this is, you know, 100% anecdotal. Like, if you're like, yeah, I, I'm the source on this. I actually, I lived in Chicago, so I'm going to tell you a couple of my own personal stories. It's like, okay, yes, anecdotes can help uh, to uh, certainly add some flavor uh, to a general and broad uh, thesis. But uh, we would like to know, I guess, just the raw data in this one. What's the, you know, the facts and the feelings? Chicago is gang violence. But what's the It's data? actually more like um, somebody smack talked my girl. And if you do that, I mean, you're gonna you're gonna pay for it. I would love to see uh, more information about that for sure. You should definitely pull up. But you want to get back to the super chats, or while you pull it up, yeah. Uh, we'll get to super chats. Right. I wish we had more time, man. I hate to. to well, I to, guess you're gonna to, have to invite me back. Yeah, but, we, but, but <laughs> <laughs> there's, uh, there's there's an opportunity to take it. There's two videos. I mean, definitely, absolutely. There's two videos on my channel. One is the interview <laughs> with uh, this woman. I forgot her name. So it was years ago. And then also when when we went night crawling. But I mean, I can also just speak as much as it's not as valuable as a direct source as someone who lived in Chicago and lived on the south side having like witnessed people doing it we know why it happens so anyway let's read some more let's read some more super chats we gotta read more um i i, I don't know if we're gonna have time for a members only segment unless you know you guys are all cool with it all right let's see i can't uh, tw uh twimmy says i can't believe in 2022 tim of the disgraced show shimcast is advocating yeah. against segregation shameful <laughs> ah heavens shimcast wonderful show let me tell you all right <laughs> jeffrey faff says sounds like george wallace left leftist atlanta teacher segregated the students if white people have privilege wouldn't they use it to their advantage all right, let's see. Um, sure, I mean, it, it happens. What do you mean? What are, what are they, what are they I'm, not, so, I'm not following. So uh, in California, sure. are you familiar with the proposition in 2020 to repeal the non-discrimination language in their constitution? I'm not, no. Excuse me. Oof. It was called like the Affirmative Action Bill or something. And uh, there was a provision in the constitution that says you can't discriminate on the basis of race, sex, national origin uh, for purposes of public, ed public education or contracting and one other thing. They wanted to remove that because they said we can't enact affirmative action without it. My issue with it was, I kind of feel like if you give the government, which includes all the smaller local governments, the ability to discriminate on the basis of race, like, my, my question to you is, is, I'll start with this. Do you think that there are racist white people? Racist white people? Yeah. Sure. Like, yes, I, I think sure. so, personally. Do you think that there are racist white people in government? Personally, I do. Sure. I do. do you think that if racist white people in government were given the opportunity to segregate on the basis, uh, to discriminate on the basis of race, they would discriminate against people of color? Probably. I think they would. So when California tried doing this, I was like, hey, that's a big no for me. But it was actually the Democrat-led effort at the national level to do. So you had tons of federal-level Democrats who were advocating for this repeal. To me, I find that shocking. So the point was, Clean up if white room. people have privilege, wouldn't they use it to their advantage? It sure looks like it. That was sure. like I mean, it, it 50 happens. years ago, yeah. wasn't it? Well, uh, the Republicans opposed it. It failed, but the Democrats were pushing it, and I'm glad they lost. I would have to look more into that. I'm not familiar with it. Thank you, Bill. All right. I appreciate it. Jeffrey Pfaff says, did he, did he just admit CNN and, and MSNBC really put ad revenue before black lives being killed in Chicago? They set the narrative, but he trusts the media. Well, I'm, I'm, you I'm, don't have to respond. To, I'm just. No, that's fine. I mean, I, I, I mean, I'm sure they do. I mean, what do you what, what do you want? They're a corporate media outlet. What is their purpose? All right, let's read some more. It's really hard to read the Super Chats way in this weird... Very small. Yeah, very small. And like, <laughs> is there a way to zoom in? Zoom in, in yeah, go, to view, yeah. go to view and enlarge it. <laughs> no, it, it, the size isn't, isn't mainly the issue. It's the formatting. Normally, we like to make sure we get people's uh, questions this is your job. from earlier in the show so we, we don't miss them. So I'll go back and then we'll, we'll, we'll try and go forward. Uh, but we're, it's like reverse, reverse right. the order we normally do it in. So I'll switch it. All right. Make 1984 Fiction again, says Tim. There is no such thing as a viable baby up until three years old. And that's being generous. That argument is infuriating. Mm. What, what does that mean? Well, he's saying children are wholly dependent on uh, right, their right, right, mother right, right, right. at an early age. Yeah, I mean, I, I get it. I've heard the arguments. It's, it's tough. I don't have all the answers. That's all I can really say. Uh, they're, they're dependent on a very different way, though. I mean, you can't say that going out and buying your child food is the same as your, your child literally being inside your body, eating the nutrients that you intake. That's not the same. Yeah, but neither give blood. you the right to kill your child if you don't want to do it. Do what? No one's advocating for killing. Anyone. Yeah, unborn children. That's what abortion is. You're killing an unborn child. 
So you're right. That it's arguably yeah, there's a difference sure, between a fetus, having a child likely. inside of you and providing resources for them. But parents are responsible for taking care of their children. Right. Yes. A child. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so the unborn child is a, a child. Person, a person, yes. And right. they are people. No one in all of history. This is this is why like and especially if you start getting this to its logical conclusion, it always gets so bizarre for me. For the whole like uh, life begins a conception crowd, you're literally talking about a series of dividing cells. Like, you know, we, we don't place, like, you know, uh, things like the sanctity of cancer, for example, which is a rapidly also expanding growth of cells in your body. Uh, in, in both instances, like, th like you also shed cells all the time. Like, you go like that. This isn't an abortion. I'm not, I'm not doing an abortion right now, you know? It, it, it's just because it has the potential in, in the future to, to, to become a person. And, like, if, if that was the case, then why doesn't impregnation uh, occur at higher rates naturally amongst women? And why do so many women consistently miscarry? I think it's like 33%. Who has ever referred to a group of humans as not being full persons has ever been right in the final analysis. That's ever. A does, 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 a, uh, does a fetus get uh, child support from their father. Sure. I would absolutely say that men should be held to account for the children that they create. Absolutely. Before, I think, before, I think, before the child is born, men should pay bro, uh, bro. child Yeah, I think men should, should I, yes, I think that men should have to pay for their children. 100%. I'm just like, I'm just like, what if uh, they propose a new bill, and this one goes, that every single person who advocates for uh, there be, that there should be limits uh, on women's bodily autonomy, that they should be forced to give birth against their will, uh, every single one of them also has to uh, adopt every single baby that is forced uh, to come into this world. It's a, it's a new bill. It's going to be a little controversial, but uh, it's it's the only fair thing to do in this situation. I, I, I think it's at this point now the bare minimum. What I, specifically yeah, yeah, what bro, I'm bro, saying. Bro, bro. Yes, those Sheamus, are children. Seamus yeah, thinks they should be married before. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And if a man abandons a woman who is pregnant with his child, he should absolutely be on the hook for taking care of her and that child. Yeah. That's but you know in in the uh, you know the current laws. <laughs> I love how he's saying it so much. Like he's he's just got some new sense of pride. By the way, like and by the way, I just want to let you know that I'm not you know as conservative as you may think. I do think that the men should be responsible and, and have to pay for uh, you know impregnating the women, even if they were a rapist. But you know, we have that's not the case. It should be good. Are you gonna are you gonna advocate for that? <laughs> he does. Yeah, I do. I, I, yeah. I'm, I'm happy. Good. He opposes Good. premarital sex. Yeah. All right. That's. I mean, like, I, I think it's interesting because like Seamus. Catholic conservative. What do you think about that one, though? About uh, about should a um a, a, a uh, the father uh, the the person who impregnates a woman the male who impregnates impregnates a woman should he be uh, responsible for child support payments from I don't know I guess uh, the moment of conception right Yes. Okay, uh, but but it's a question for me of law right I think one of the problems we have is cultural enforcement I think we should do these things I think a man should be responsible the moment the woman is like yo I'm pregnant it's like well tell me what you need and what to do and he's gonna take care of it. Uh, I don't know if how, how much I like the government's involvement in like a person's private matters because we've seen instances where even mothers have argued they don't want child support anymore, but the government's been like, we don't care, and then force the guy to put the money through the government and to her. And That's a like, very specific case. That's not the vast majority of the, the issues <laughs> there, that there, come out. But, I mean, you're in favor of the state in, enforcing like the private matters between a man and a woman? If a, if, a, if, a, if a woman is going to have a baby, then yes, absolutely. The father should be. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's a more conservative position than I would have expected. You don't, what, you have a father's rights guy? That's actually usually a right. No, woman. no, no. I think, pro, I, think I, I assumed you were more on the side of like individual, you know, like why would, why would the woman have the right to choose, but not, not the man? I just assumed you would. Well, the right to choose is based on the body. What, what do you mean? When it's, it's my body, my choice, right? It's not my baby or my fetus, my choice. We're talking about, <laughs> it's a woman's body. That's the news, and she. <laughs> Matt had to say, "My fetus, my choice." <laughs> Has um, the ability to decide what she wants to do with her body. Does the man um, have a right to choose in any, any capacity? With his own body, sure. Yeah. No, but like, does the man have a right over whether or not the woman? He should have. I would say, and I'm saying this as a man, an input for sure that should be, uh, you know, listened to. But when it gets down to it, it's not his body. Like, if the guy wants to walk away from the entire ordeal or whatever is happening, he can. And and what Matt is saying here is that, well, okay, but if this, uh, you know, baby comes to be born and it gets to that point, then, yes, I agree, broadly speaking, that there should be support uh, for the kid. It's better for child welfare. I don't think that's, like, a distinctly uh, conservative position. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know this disproportionately obviously goes in the opposite direction. It's usually men doing it to women. But isn't there, uh, wouldn't the same situation be if he was, like, um, if he wasn't working to raise the kid? Like, if he was a single father, wouldn't she have to pay child support? Like, I, I don't think it's it's just um, 
like you know an undue burden which is like placed upon uh men or something uh in terms of like if they decide together to have a baby then yeah no, no like let's say a man and woman hook up and they, they both were like uh oh she's pregnant it's not his body so but can he choose to just leave it can he choose to just leave it yeah mm, no so you you think the man should have no say in the matter in any capacity well he has plenty of say in the matter he could just not have sex with that woman the woman could not have sex too sure so so she has so the woman has a right to choose and the man doesn't but with her because it's her body yes right, what if the man is like i don't want to pay for it well he's got to why does he have because that's the law why does the woman have to pay for it she does pay for it with her body and raising <laughs> a child she can get rid of it for, she can get rid of she's born. right that's what, that's what you want to do? <laughs> she no, does I'm saying pay if, for like i recognize the woman the woman's body but how can you argue pro-choice for the woman but but not the man's right to because, it's, because himself pro-choice is talking about the woman's body it's not what do you think pro-choice is we're talking about <laughs> women's body that's what does, the pro-choice movement is well, I, I, I assume <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's CRT, privilege, any topic that Tim likes to talk about professionally. He doesn't seem to know what the words mean or the terms mean. Like time and time again. What do you think pro-choice is? I think the guy I think it's about fetus payments, and I'm just gonna be honest with you. I've just I've never understood it. My friends, why should a guy have to pay the fetus tax? I think it's a brave new idea that's coming out of the left, and I oppose it. Now I'm just a milk toast fence sitter. At the end of the day, but I have to tell you, the fetus tax, it's going to destroy us all. It's going to start a race I mean, war. It's literally, it's literally I, in, it's literally I, in everything you, they say. My body, my choice. That's the thing. It's not my fetus, my choice. It's my body, my choice. Right, right, I have, right. That's the whole I thing thought, that I Roe v. Wade argues equality. with the 14th Amendment, right? You said you were, you were pro-choice. Equality, equality. Like, if <laughs> the woman can choose to terminate or not, it's her choice. Because it's her body, yes. Right. The man could also choose to sever or not. It's his choice. Sever what? Sever what? What are you talking about? Just, Se sever just, ties. Well, no, he's responsible for oh. the life that he helped bring into this world. I definitely thought he meant cock. I, 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 I was like, <laughs> I mean, that is your choice. I, I think it's a very poor one. I would never recommend anyone sever uh, themselves. But uh, okay, good, good to know. Here we are. Well, if that's what she decides to go forward with. So men have less of a say in the birth of the baby. Like, like, like hear, hear me out. Do you think it would be okay if a woman got an abortion because she couldn't afford a baby? Like, let's say she's six weeks pregnant. She has no money. And and she's like, I got, I can't afford this. I'm sure, because it's her body, yes. So, but based on finances. Sure. What if the guy has no money and he's homeless? Well, then the um the, the courts take that into consideration. So yeah, I'm not asking you about the courts. I'm you saying you think the guy zero, should be like, I have zero. no money, I can't have a baby. What do you, well, then he should have considered that before he went ahead and did an act that resulted in the birth of a child. But why should the white woman not have that same Because it's her it's body. It's it's really simple. Yeah, exactly. No, she had thing. the option not to use her body to engage in the act which creates children. She did have that no, option. No, no, it's not, it's not, it's not. We're, we're specifically talking about the right to your body. I can't believe this. So is, is this just like mainstream conservatism right now? Is this why it's like so much of this shit is being justified? Like, oh my God. Mm -hmm. There is. I mean, you guys disagree. That's that's fine. I mean, but this is a this is the position. No, um, no, no, I, 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 I mean, I, I, I think. Uh, you know, I think I, we agree. I'm just confused as to what your what your principled position is because it doesn't seem to make sense to me. How does that make sense? I think it's you have two human beings who are of equal rights within, under the eye of the government. But you're, one what? says, "I am six weeks pregnant, but I can." If you could get pregnant, Tim, all of this would apply. It, it would be the same situation. You you realize that that's that's what the autonomy part of it means. Like you have control over your own body. You you, you get to make this decision choose to end the life of this uh, to, to end right now because the child you're, you're, you now, keep, now hold on but the major thing is that the choice I get is her body. choice over her body right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. And so, it, so, so the male's body is not involved so there's no choice involved if this is in public I'm imagine what these sickos okay. say in private so no like kidding the responsibility of it comes in so a woman, no who, kidding. a woman can get an abortion because she's broke right sure that's her body right right okay so a woman can be like I'm not gonna have a baby I can't afford it yes was there any responsibility for her when she decided to engage in sex with without and then getting pregnant is there any responsibility there? I mean sure but at the end of the day it's her body and she has the right to decide what she yeah wants. no one is saying that all of a sudden like I think this is playing into that weird idea that people use abortion as birth control and like it's such a callous way of looking at all this because a no it, it, it's not something that people do lightly and b it can be devastating whether or not you wanted to have uh, a kid or whether or not you want it like think of like a how it's just like broadly vilified by uh, an entire side of like the political mass in, in uh, america on top of that uh like you've got to put into your head all these ideas and notions and, and, and things that people talk about like it's not an easy decision no one makes makes these choices likely uh they should just have access to it it's it's that simple what happens so what about the man does he, he he has he has no say in the matter at all i mean if a man wants if a man does not want a child he should not engage in acts that require him a child. It, it's again i would play into this just because his audience uh, i think would probably respond better to something like uh 
he does have input, absolutely. No one is saying that he shouldn't have input and he should be listened to, especially because um, it could be in a situation where they're deeply in love and this is something that they might have wanted to do in the future and then this is like them deciding what their options are. Of course, listen to input, uh, absolutely. Uh, but when it comes to the actual decision-making, it's not his body. Like, that's that, that's all there is to it. It's very, very simple. The, the Like, if you had cancer, for example... Does someone else, should you listen to family members who try to advise you in that case? Yes, you should. Like, they can have input. Your loved one can be like, uh, I'm kind of scared that you're not going to the doctor. Uh, you don't want to take the chemo. You don't want to do anything. Yes. But ultimately, you should have the choice as to what you want to do. And, and like, if you have a loved one, I would assume that you've got a good relationship where you would have input with each other about something that needed to happen to you. But ultimately, the choice should be yours. Like, no one wants to take away uh, your bodily autonomy uh, to, to make a decision like that, right? The choice should be yours. Really if he does want a child, though, there's many ways he could go about getting a child if, that, if the, his partner, for example, doesn't want a child. You know that your argument is an inversion of the right-wing argument. Like, like they're identical in, in principle. But he could have make a vasectomy. No sense logically, could wear a condom. I mean, I would I would say that my position is the, uh, the position that most like, people on the left have. Right, right. So when Seamus says both the mother and the father have to be responsible for what they, what they did and the man has to pay... And the woman should be able to kill the baby. That's logical. Because it's a child at that point. That's, that's like, you know, that's the same reason why abortion after birth would be defined as murder. Because because it's a kid at that point. And, and the kid should be taken care of. At that point, uh, it, it is a living, breathing human being. Sound. I get it. Both have like the they, overwhelming majority of abortions take place uh, in early trimesters, and at well, those stages, uh, you know, they are not a fully formed human. It's 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 one of those really weird things where it's like you are kind of applying this weird, like I guess it plays into that moral um, philosophy from uh, Carolyn Borinsenko or Borinsenko. Do you remember her when she was like talking about ghost babies and how she genuinely believes that uh, everyone who is born. Uh, already exists in some form of an astral plane somewhere and they live multiple lives being like sucked into uh the vessels of human bodies and uh they want to suffer so like you know they like they become hitler and things like that and they choose that they choose to become uh, like that's where she takes it to strange new places. Like Hitler chose to be Hitler. That was that was one of the the many ghost baby vessels who was just like, you know what? I wanna I wanna try being a Hitler, and then it was like, it was uh, and all that kind of stuff. It was it was it was wild. But like if you genuinely look uh, or view the world, uh, the, the idea that there are external souls that are just always in existence, um, and that uh, you have a permanent version of yourself, and that version is just waiting to input itself into again a human vessel and then come out of the body. Uh, that's probably why you're, you're constantly like. Well, even if that was the case, it's not like the, the soul would die. Like, it, it, it's it's not like at the end of the day, if you had an abortion and that soul uh, suddenly uh, is, is terminated, it, it, they're immortal. So it, it goes back into the pool and, and then it, it would repeat the whole cycle again. Uh, the big kerfuffle was her saying that people chose to be Holocaust victims. That's right. Yeah, everyone who was in the Holocaust chose to to live that life so that they, uh, they, could, uh, they could learn... Oh, wow. Done it. The baby's there. Your position is one gets to say, one doesn't. Because we're talking... I'm talking about, about finances, not a body. Okay. You keep changing it, the subject. Because because finances just... When it comes to a woman's choice, the finances are just ir irrelevant. Because a woman's choice is to... Because is, is the man doesn't have anything happen to his body. There's nothing. There's nothing. He doesn't have anything happen to his body. Why should... Why, if the woman chooses to have a baby, it's her, her decision. Sure. So the man does... Why does the man have to choose? Like, the man has no choice to have, it, to have the kid? I think he does. He could just not have done what he did to result in a pregnancy. So, like, you're, so here's the problem. The 14th Amendment, this, this is my confusion. The 14th Amendment says equality. I think he almost made uh, a, an argument there for why can't men uh, activate abortions. The law. You can't create a circumstance in, in which, for any reason, body or otherwise, one person has a legal right to another Stop watching these have. people. They're both the born and wrong. Decide what? Matt Binder's awesome. To, I, for I disagree. Reasons, terminate a pregnancy or keep it under, under any argument. The man would have to have, under the 14th Amendment, the same equality under the law. Now, if you want to make an argument about a woman's right to an abortion because it's her body, I agree. It's her body. But now we're talking about responsibility that one can end and one can't. That doesn't jive under the 14th Amendment. I don't understand. That makes no sense. I mean, what, you're, you're arguing from a 14th Amendment perspective. Which is Roe v. Wade. It, sure, but it, it's not the same thing. But it, Equality it, under it law it means men and women have to be able to make the right, same so, so, financial so, decisions. So you're, you're saying that every situation where a man uh, did not want to have a child and is forced to pay child support, your claim is that it's currently uh, mm -hmm. unconstitutional. 
is if I'm, I'm so my position is the guy should pay. No, right? your position was, you're, but you're you're asking me this. I said from the beginning, I think the guy should pay. Okay, so we agree. But I think I think we need cultural changes. Okay. My That's, question is, I don't understand how you reconcile that. I mean, I don't want to... I don't know what this is like in America or what um, or how America treats this. Um, but is it a situation where does the state force a man uh, to pay? Uh, money for an abortion if he doesn't want to because I don't I don't think that's the case right I could I could be wrong I mean um, inform me please oh yeah Chico's just pointing that out he's doing his best impression of a croissant right now talk about like my, my position is if you want, if you want to talk about if yeah okay so the answer is no okay well then what the fuck is Tim talking about here like yeah uh, like uh, it's your body it's your choice and you would be the only one under the law that would have to pay for it uh, at the end of the day uh it would be a really great thing if if like you know whoever impregnated you helped out that, that would, it would be a great thing but like now saying that this is somehow different than child support like that's about the welfare of children this is a separate thing it's about cultural changes that's fine i i could agree with cultural changes but that doesn't change the fact that in the situation where, as it happens right now, if a woman does not want a pregnancy, uh, six weeks, like you said, not viable, completely legal to do in this country, she can have an abortion. So when it comes to financial... A man cannot force her to have the abortion. A man cannot claim he doesn't want to pay for a Should child. Should women pay child support to men? So for what? For the baby. For the baby? What do you mean? If, if a man and a woman get together and they have kids, sure. and the woman is, you know, she works at uh, Vice Media making 70 k If he's the, if he's the one raising the child him. exclusively the child. alone. No, no, after it's born. After it's child born? support is after it's born. If they're together, then no. Why would no, they? no, they split up. They split up? Yeah, yeah. Is he taking care of the child? They have dual custody. Do, is he taking care of the child? Dual, dual, custody? dual custody means they both have equal access to the child. I mean, I'm sure she's making sure if that's the case that the child the, is The okay. government should mandate women pay child support to men. I mean, if it's if it's that situation where the uh, the, the man is in squalor taking care of the child, then yes, sure. Oh, what if what if the man makes 50k and the woman makes 80? I mean, if the court decides, I'm fine with that. So, uh, simple question, simplified. Women should pay the same child support men should pay in the same circumstances. Sure, if they're, if they're, if they're both taking care of the child, sure. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's one way to get it. All right, let's see what we got. We'll, uh... That's what you were asking this whole time? <laughs> that's not how it read to me. We could have got, got past that a lot earlier. <laughs> well, my, my question is, if you're making a Fourth Amendment argument no, for he wasn't. Uh, abortion, how do you ignore the, 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 like, that men don't have... Tim is all about sense. the gotchas. He wants a lot of like, well, clips, more, more sound bites, oh. moments. Go, go yeah, yeah. So what, what, uh, if a man pressures a woman to have an abortion, what should the penalty for that be? If, a man, if a man pressures Yeah, a woman? yeah. So you're saying a man can't make a woman have an abortion. I mean, what if he does? What should the penalty be? Well, what do you mean by make? Like, he, he puts pressure on her. He coerces her into doing it. He threatens her. He says he'll hurt her. Something. I mean, if it's like, if if he's forcing the abortion or something like that, is is that what you're asking here? This is very, very strange. Like, the, it's still her body, her choice. That rule doesn't suddenly change. Like, I, I don't see why you're trying to turn this into a men's rights issue. Are they like they're they're, they're both trying to turn abortion and the abortion debate into a men's rights thing. Do you see what, do you see this? Like, in both directions? That, that's a completely but, different but, thing. So, so here's the thing. That's if, a completely if a man, different thing. Do you think it should be a different penalty than if a man threatens a woman for some other reason? Like, if a man says, you know, uh, I'll hit you if you don't listen versus I'll hit you if you don't get an abortion. Do you think that those are different circumstances that should incur a different penalty? If if he does something to actually like, convincing her... What if he threatens her? She has an abortion because... Uh, if a woman says, I got this abortion because a man threatened me, should... Like, I think a lot of what you're describing could be seen as criminal behavior, but do you think that there should be a specific thing for each possible, like, horrible thing that a man could enact upon a woman? Like, the possibilities are literally endless. Like, what if he's like, oh, well, if you don't do this, I'm going to put you into a bucket of spiders. Oh, if you don't do this, I'm going to put you into uh, a jar of jello that will then congeal and you won't be able to remove yourself from it. Like, okay, there, there's a never-ending thing of threats people can do. I think it would still fall under threatening behavior. It doesn't matter what the, the thing is going to be. There be a legal like penalty of for that. I would actually love to see if there are laws in the books for that because that'd be interesting for sure. I think um, you know there are in terms of like if a man was to punch a pregnant woman, his, his pregnant partner, and that would result in abortion, uh, that would be considered in this country a fetal homicide. We have mm -hmm. a specific classification oh, wow. for that in that. those scenarios. Yes. Yeah. So there are certain circumstances in certain states where you can be charged with homicide for killing fetal an unborn child. Homicide. It's yes, a separate, but, you've, it's, but it's, homicide it's, means you've killed a human. It's, it's that's what homicide means. It's specifically called a fetal homicide. Yes, but you're acknowledging that it is homicide. Sure, that's He, he killed a person, but what you're yeah. saying is under specific <laughs> circumstances, so many mother technicalities. Want that child, killing it becomes acceptable. Because we're now talking about the issue of it her being her body. Big old gotcha. And she has the authority over herself, over but her person. she's not making a decision about herself. She's making a decision about the child that's growing. The law disagrees with that, though. The law agrees that... That law's wrong. Okay, well then... Right, I, I think you guys, like... Sure, but, but then, yeah, then yeah, I guess my, my final question is, since it's an issue of her body, would you argue that since this is just about her body, it's not about a right to kill a child, that if the child is viable, it should be delivered and then saved with medical technology? 
What, do you think that should be the requirement? If the child's viability, if the child is past the point of viability right, and the mother already, doesn't want to be pregnant, what should these? she be allowed to kill that child that can survive? <laughs> Every single minute that they've been talking about abortion debate, and, and even in various parts of the show, all they have is these utterly bizarre hypotheticals uh, in like, you know, like when Tim Poole was basically like talking about a baby guillotine. He's like, do you think it's okay if like, they cut the, the baby's head off the moment it's coming out of the mother? And I'm like, what are you talking about? That This doesn't happen. <laughs> like, what are these weird scenarios? Like, I, I need you to entertain the, the most unlikely scenarios. But what if the baby was viable and then using advanced science, we can then revive it. So what would you say in that situation? It's like, okay, so when that advanced science is available, I guess we can explore this. Please let me know. Uh, and in the meantime, uh, while we're here living in uh, the real world, uh, I would think that maybe there should be a scenario in which uh, someone uh, shouldn't have to do things against their own bodily autonomy. That's what it really comes down to here. Outside the womb, or should country, there be a requirement? I'm not talking about the laws in the country. Yeah. Or I'm asking about your position. Sure. I mean, if I, this is just about a woman's body, this is something that's discussed in bioethics classes. To live outside I'm her sure you're at a much higher viable. degree than this. Though. Is she able to abort the child and kill it, or would you argue, since this is just about her body and not killing a child, that everything would have to be done to deliver and save that child? It's her body. That's why my position. Well, but but that's no, not no, an hold argument. On, hold on, hold on, hold on. We're, we're not talking about her body. Yeah, I'm saying. So, they're, they're, so, so. Because when, when they perform they're, an abortion they're, they're procedure, they actually. Specific. So, in uh, your weird hypothetical scenario, uh, if she did not want to participate in being the mother to that child, then that child, using the medical science technology to uh, revive and expand it and grow it, apparently, because again, most abortions are very early on. So, I mean, you, I, if there's a way in the future to gestate children in the pods, uh, then uh, we'll use the pod machine, uh, something to that effect. Um, it would be put up for adoption. Like, so if you've got the, the pod system where we're growing human beings that have been aborted at early times, then yeah, I guess technically you're making children for adoption. Specifically, go in but and kill the child. They don't simply remove it. So but you're talking about something that doesn't happen. It's not happening in this. Under, what are you talking under, about? Under people aren't getting law, abortions. Under, uh, after viability, a woman can't just up and choose. There has to be a reason. And, and I but, told but you, I read, not, I read citations from. Right. Part Tim Ed's case about late-term abortion from the beginning was a guy who did illegal abortions and went to jail. Okay, well then, like, it's then is it a, a thing? <laughs> Right, guys, guys, birth guys. abortionists right. who have said the number one reason cited is depression I think in their the, practice. I, I, so th I think this quantifies the political issue we have in this country. Oh, that's so disingenuous. They experience depression at high rates. Yes, you were going through a very difficult situation. It's not, I'm depressed, want to abort my child now. Like That's so disingenuous. Very simply. My political positions have long been from, from what's called traditional liberal. Like, that's, For, that is so fucking sexist. I'm sorry, but that is so fucking sexist to be like, women, they're emotional. They get depressed sometimes, and then they just murder their unborn children. So we got to prevent ladies, right? Ladies be aborting, let me tell you. Uh, what, what, in the first several weeks, pre-viability, beyond that. I understand Seamus's perspective. I have a, a libertarian argument that he's mocked and doesn't agree with. I don't think you understand at all what's being said. Uh, there's pod experiments now. I've seen that. They grew uh, a goat in a pod, didn't they? Yeah, we'll have, sum we'll have human pods now. Or, I mean, human pods soon. Okay. I'm not saying that to be disrespectful. I'm saying mm. when, when I pull up the law and we're trying to explain to you what the definition of abortion is according to the U.S. government and you don't understand it, you say it's her body, but we didn't mention her body. We're talking about a baby being delivered, but you defer to some... Something that's not we're being talked I, about. I, I don't know. It's, if we it's, can. I mean, I, I, I we've discussed this. I, I don't view it as I view it as an issue of it's if the if the fetus is in the mother's body, and going by the current laws we have right now, which what? I uh, for uh, Roe v. Wade. I'm Casey, sorry. This is this is the issue. We're trying to ask you about your advocacy. My You're advocacy is what law. my advocacy is what exactly is legal in this country right now. So you think? But then, but then, let me try this. Let me try this. There's two. There's two babies. The <laughs> pregnant woman, and she's eight and a half. Months. They're on a trolley. You have the lever. What do you do? Once along. There's another baby next to her that is freshly delivered at eight and a half weeks. The babies are completely, oh, you know, I got a better idea. Twins. Here we go. A woman is pregnant with twins. One is born. Can they kill the one still in her? Or no? If there's something that needs, if that's what absolutely needs to be done, yes, that's the law. So you yes. say, it, no, 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 no. But that you, is, can't, you can't say my position is the law. And falls, well, that's just is, the law. Why, why He's asking you philosophically, is it a moral I don't, care to I don't care to about the, the, the baby. But I don't care about the philosophical discussions because what matters is the law. These philosophical discussions help inform affect, what the law should be. They don't. So, no, but the law is what it is right the, now. It's her body is a philosophical the point that changing. you're making. No, that's the Democrats just tried to change the law last week. Okay, but they didn't. Because they failed thanks to people like me. Because people like me who oppose of terminating the life of a baby when it's when it can survive outside the womb we oppose that okay we've always opposed that right. 
Bill Pro Clinton, by the way. all of us, since going back, the traditional liberals, the traditional liberal position. So Seamus is the classical conservative position. I'm the traditional lib- liberal position, and you're the progressive leftist position. So you can understand why everyone on the right calls me a leftist, because I actually I say eh, first term, you know, pro-choice or whatever. And that is so far from where Republicans are and conservatives are. But then you guys are sitting here saying a woman can decide to terminate a viable baby if she chooses. That is so far removed from me. No, no, no. I never. When we're talking about a viable pregnancy, the laws in this country are that there needs to be a reason that it's done where the baby is going like why why is it so hard for you to understand that i agree with yeah it's one of those things where it's like i am completely against uh abortions in the eighth month and it's like okay uh you can say that out loud the vast majority of abortions are not done in the eighth month and right now people are fighting to not have all abortion laws struck down right any any rights at all so if you're going to be like, I've got this very specific scenario involving uh, baby guillotines and, and pod development. And, uh, you know, it's it's just like it's it, philosophically based. My moral imperative here does not allow me to to agree with you. It's like, OK, you're, you're again, you're, you're bringing this all up to the benefit again, Tim Pool of the right. Because uh, it, it's going to give them an advantage if you've got someone who's like, oh, don't worry, I'm I'm a milk toast liberal. Uh, I'm, I'm just like Bill Clinton. This is completely fine. At the same time, watch the whole YouTube video if you're watching this. Tim's chat was so ridiculous. That Binder did pretty well. Yeah, for the most part, I think there was only like one slip up. And then he just misread the second link that I said at him uh, as uh, him being a QAnon, uh, like an actual QAnoner. And I was trying to say he's like an apologist. He's he's a defender of QAnon uh, getting canceled from the internet and stuff. What the laws currently are. Because I'm asking you about your moral so I, position I even take and advocacy, credit for the mistake. not what the law uh, is. Drackley. My moral the position law is yeah, every Thanks state for the is that it is a woman's choice because it is her body. And if a fetus inside her body can survive. Excuse me? Can survive. Right. In this country, you can she, only do that. Like, you're just going to, whatever you're trying to get out of me, I don't know what you're looking for, but you're not going to get it because I'm telling you exactly what my position no, no, no. is. You know what your position is? You're scared to actually say because the left will come at you. No. Oh, bro, bro. No. How many times? Did a woman has a right to choose whatever she We're deems not is talking about a woman, but you refuse to say Wait, it because what? this is, this is <laughs> the issue. But that's what, that's what abortion is. If the baby is at the point of birth, Kathy Tran said it could be killed. In the situation where the woman's life or there is something growing the inside a woman. The wo- Does he not know how babies are made? Is this going to be a stork thing? Is, is it going to be like, well, you know, uh, all of a sudden I put my uh, PP in the VV and then uh, the goo goo comes out. And then, uh, you know, uh, nine months later, the stork drops off the baby, right? I mean, how do they get a baby? They still, if, a woman is nine months pregnant. Sure. At the point of birth. She has dilated. Part two, Terrence Bogards. Kathy Tran said, yes, you can end the life of the baby. As per the CDC's definitions. Is that what she said? Yes. If that's what she said. Okay, then there must be a reason that it's done. It's not just babies coming out and she goes, I don't want it. What's the reason? Okay, so the baby and has, the, the baby and has that's to be removed. The baby has to be removed from the woman, right? The baby has to be removed from the woman. The pregnancy is bad. The baby has to be removed. Are you talking about like a miscarriage? No, no, no. I'm saying when Kathy Tran said at the point of birth, oh, I'm sorry, it was a judge, I believe it was a judge who said, a woman is dialing at the point of birth. Could you perform an abortion? She said, there are no restrictions. None. No limitations. It was then stated to Ralph Northam, even to the point of birth, abortion, as the CDC defines it, is a no live birth removal of the pregnancy. How do they get the baby? Again, out? these are like these weird little isolated examples that clearly circulate a lot in like the bright parts, uh, parts of the internet. Oh, with the Tim is probably the daily caller um, where it's like, sure, we can talk about fringe, radical, uh, isolated examples, and you can try to base your philosophy and or policy on that. I'm speaking to the vast majority of people that this is going to affect and how they should have rights and bodily autonomy. But like, yes, you can bring up the baby guillotines and all this kind of stuff. And then people are going to be like, oh, wow, his moral outrage uh, certainly does make me worried about this. Uh, I, I kind of really don't want this to be a thing. Like I, I, I kind of uh, I'm for bodily autonomy, but also, you know, uh, women, uh, they be aborting. So uh, I got to do something about this. Out of the woman. What do you, the same way that you would... You- what are you asking like if she gives birth? But but an abortion ends the life of the baby, according to the CDC. Sure. So if they would legalize abortion up to the point of birth, that means ending a, a, a termination of a pregnancy that results in no live birth would mean they need to take action to end it's the life so of the baby. It's so rare when that happens. As it's coming out. So if you're saying there needs to be a reason, my question Kathy is, Kathy Tran okay, already did a retraction saying she was spoke. No way. a fully developed baby at nine months out of a womb when it needs to be removed? Uh, it depends on what the doctor decides is right. C-section or birth? No, or no. What? Abortion ends the life of the baby. Sure. So how do they remove the baby? Kathy Tran was known for nursing her baby on the house floor. Now she's getting death threats over abortion. 
Virginia Dell, Kathy Tran, said Thursday that she misspoke during a legislative hearing earlier this week about a bill that would have loosened restrictions on late-term abortion. Her comments sparked death threats and intense backlash from GOP politicians, including President Trump. I wish that I got quicker on my feet, and I wish I was able to be more agile at that moment. Uh, and I misspoke, and I really regret that. Uh, when Republican lawmaker I was asked during the hearing whether the bill would allow for abortion to occur when a woman is in labor and about to give birth, Tran said yes. Um, but on Thursday, Tran, a mother of four, corrected herself and said clearly no, because infanticide is not allowed in Virginia, and what would have happened in that moment would be a live birth. Well, what do you know? I'm sure Tim just uh, completely forgot about that part. And it's life at the same time at nine months. What do you, what, that doesn't happen. There's no abortions happening once the baby is out of the body. The law they proposed would legalize that. No, it wouldn't, because that, that would be homicide, because that is now a person. You're starting to get it. That's a person. You're starting to get it. At birth, when the baby is out and becomes a baby, it is a person, and that would be considered homicide, not an abortion, and homicide is illegal. Crazy law. That it just, just magically, it's a person instantly. Now it has legal protections. I mean, that's exactly what the law says. It's a re Why did Tim think that was such a gotcha? Pro-choice Tim. As in implying that, hey, you finally understand, they're all people, all of them, even the semen that flows in my balls. Those millions and billions of little semen are actually people, potential human beings stored in my balls, my magical balls, my glorious golden balls filled with the human race waiting to be born. You understand now. You understand. Really bad law. I mean, that's what the law is. Let me just try and see if I can pull it up. The baby gets a name then? The baby gets a birth certificate? The baby already already name, legal in some cases baby, in Virginia. Well, I mean, a lot of... Gets social security number, a baby... Uh, th those things are what make you a human? In this country, under the law, it's what makes you a person. There's a difference between being a human and a person. Disagree. I think humans are persons. Yeah, video, I think that's a false Tran distinction acknowledges to strip that people of their rights. Every time that distinction is made that these humans are not persons worthy of rights and protections, it is always an argument to strip them of their rights and do horrific things. And, and I pointed out too, it's never... Why is he getting so angry about this issue, like, compared to any other part in the entire debate? I'm talking about the comic book guy, uh, where he's just like, like, you're dealing about legislating against women's bodies. That's, that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to remove people's bodily autonomy. You're trying to say the state has the right to force them to give birth. Uh, that's, that's, that's super messed up. Why are you so impassioned about this? Like, what, why is it like the subjugation and oppression of women is, is something that all of a sudden it's like, no, no, we have to talk about this. It's very, very serious. It's never, you, that's it's always been the losing side. Always with the losing side. Says. Every, every, says. every argument throughout history that some people aren't legally people has always failed. Mm. So, uh, Tran acknowledges her bill, which was killed in a five to three vote, would allow a woman to receive an abortion even up to the point. Oh, Lumi Lady, you're still here. I didn't think this was going to go so long. I thought I had a second half to watch uh, about Tim Pool. Sorry, I know I said we were going to show your video, but like uh, this debate, which I'm trying to upload the second part for YouTube, uh, is 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 quite long. They get they get very pulled into the most bizarre rabbit holes. When she is about to give birth, the Virginia House GOP tweeted the legislation would provide abortions up to just seconds before the precious child takes their first breath. Right. That means before the baby is born. But at the point of birth, seconds before, you think there's a distinction? If the, Yes, there's a distinction. One is a baby is born and the other one is not. And there has to be a medical concern for either the mother. Yeah, or I mean, you should really bring that up. Like, uh, it's a tragedy if someone is getting an abortion at the night month. It usually means that the, the child is not viable. Sometimes the kid has already died inside the womb and or there could be a danger or a threat to the mother. Like, it's an absolute tragedy. It's a horrifying event. No one wants it to happen. And when it does, it's to save a life. That's, that's all there is to it. Or the fetus. No, there should be medical concern. And I've told you, I, we, I mentioned this early on the show, there have been entire petitions signed by doctors saying that this idea of a medically necessitated abortion is a myth. You've also repeatedly claimed that late-term abortions don't happen. It's only because there's some extreme reason why they I need to. They, but I, I said, they don't, you said they don't happen, but I quoted the Guttmacher Institute, the most pro-choice abortion. That's a bad take. That's just, that's not a take. That's reality. That like the, the majority of women who are having abortions at the ninth month, it's because there is a threat to the woman and it's not something they, like people aren't deciding at the ninth month for the first time all of a sudden, you know what, actually, I think I should get an abortion. This is, now it seems uh, an appropriate time. I mean, I've gone through the majority, almost all of my pregnancy, like all of it, uh, but now, now is the opportunity. Now, now is when uh, the abortion needs to take place. ...related think tank in this country, their own numbers, and according to them, it's, late-term abortions only reality. happen because there is some fetal anomaly, one to two percent of the times, one third of the time, it's because the woman says she missed... I was talking about the limitation on bodily autonomy. That's exactly what you are doing if you outlaw abortion. If you make it illegal to get an abortion, if you threaten people with lawsuits or jail or imprisonment for getting abortions, that's the state using their power to force people to have birth against their will. That's, again, what it is. These aren't, these aren't takes. This is a description.
she underestimated how far along she was. 25% of the time, they said they tried to arrange an earlier abortion, couldn't. 14% said they were afraid at that point to tell their parents or partner. The rest cited something uh, along the lines of you taking their time to decide or a change in their relationship status. I'm going to I'm gonna throw so, a but that's just, So your point is completely wrong, but you've said this repeatedly. That I'm doesn't just, happen. And it's some of the public platform when you're speaking about a life and death issue where infants are being slaughtered. You have a responsibility to know that it does in fact happen and stop saying that. Stop saying, but I don't, Stop saying I, it doesn't happen. You've said from, multiple times it doesn't happen. What's the link so, I can, so we can show them? Yeah, so. I can pull up. It's a 1988 Gutmacher Institute study. 1988 can, survey. Well, because they don't survey this anymore because guess what? They didn't get the results that they wanted. I'm just going to I'm gonna do this. I'm going to be a little bit uh, just take a mess live stream after the gonna, debate. Uh, point he, he tells the crowd that went on. I where, am, I'm going on like so five hours now. I'll, I'll have to save that for another Seamus day. Shows I, like, at least in the order of things, like, we got to watch that uh, we Satanism have that cases, Illuminati that video, uh, we have which I might have to do tomorrow now, and then we have we can finish the other half. We have a moral uh, difference. But I'll give you an example of where I think the problem lies, and I'm going to throw it back to explain the Thanos moment with Sam Cedar. Sam doesn't know what deontology or utilitarianism is. And when I was having a conversation with him and I referenced deontological thinking versus utilitarianism, he said, I don't understand what that is. How do you explain to someone who doesn't understand these concepts what they are? How would you propose I, I explain deontology or utilitarianism? I don't know. I don't know. What if I use something that is common to most people, like a movie? I mean, if you want to do that. Sure. Maybe if I'm dealing with someone who doesn't know philosophy, they're not, I'm not saying See, they have is, to this know This is the thing. I understand why on your show and you like to have the discussion, but I don't, I don't deal in the philosophical. I just don't. I just don't. I deal with actual policy and what's actually going on and what happens to people in real life. Um, what do you, what do you think nice I mean by have, philosophical? It's nice. To, well, because it's kind of like, we want to know your opinion on where you base your judgment on morality. And then, you know, Matt's more like, I want to talk about policy. I want to talk about how this directly affects people because as much as I would love to philosophize about whether or not, uh, you know, in the trolley problem, uh, with babies and however else you're trying to like set it up, Tim. Uh, I also think that this is something that is directly going to impact people in America, women in America, trans men in America, non-binary people in America. They're all going to be impacted by this and it's going to make their lives more dangerous. Broadly speaking, it's going to also have problems uh, in a variety of ways for society. It, it's an absolute nightmare. It is draconian. It's moving things back in the opposite direction. So that's why this is important. But yes, let's talk about Marvel movies. Opining about hypotheticals, you do that um, all the that, time. That's, that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, then what? Well, this is another another really great point. Sure. I think that you and Sam lack the perspicacity to understand the context of the arguments and the substance of them. So, in the context of Sam Cedar, I made a reference to deontology, that a moral act against a single individual no, cannot be. No, I'm not willing to put. I'm I'm willing to put my weight behind diminishing the number of concentration camps. I think that before you go, that's a really great point that I think may separate. It's utilitarianism versus deontologism that you, you, you're quantifying versus I'm not. You see what I, I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm saying your philosophical standard is the minimization of harm, and mine is more about the individual is the small, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm curious about the second part of that. You said, you know what I mean, because I really don't. Oh, so, mine is so about minimization two, of harm. The, the, the two philosophies about feeling... The in, uh, violating the harm. ethics of an individual is violating ethics regardless. And yours is minimization of harm is better. So utilitarian versus deontological. From my standpoint, committing yeah, one unethical I, act is a violation of principle and ethics that can't be crossed. But I will admit, there's not like a hard line. It's, 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 is, you know. um, I think that is silly, to be honest with you. <laughs> I mean, I, I respect you, you know, but they're very strong philosophical uh, positions. I, I, most people I, that I, I believe that less suffering is better and that I am willing to... I'll, I'll, I will I'll tell you something you won't oh, like to hear, though. I'm willing to the, sell the, you, myself if that, uh, <laughs> that's the outcome. But, but I'll, I'll tell you something you're not going to want to hear, and, and I admit it's, it's uh, I'll, I'll call it dickish. Uh, utilitarianism is typically the villain in most movies. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, so, so for instance, like Thanos oh. was, the, was utilitarian, and Captain America was the ecological. I didn't So Thanos that. willing to reduce the suffering by killing, you know, hundreds of trillions versus the you know, thousands of trillions which would be living better off so uh or or uh, uh, uh like uh but i'm not psych comic book movies i i'm not having to kill anybody i'm just <laughs> voting and truly i mean if you it's still such a banger <laughs> I will say this. While his opinions and views uh, have not evolved at all since then, his confidence certainly has. His, his his confidence is definitely on full display while still regurgitating the same childish bullshit. An immoral act against a single individual should not be taken versus utilitarianism, which is more the argument that the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few, which is also a pop culture reference. The idea being that we tend to see villainous people as those who are willing to sacrifice people for the sake of other people. We tend to see heroes as those who are willing to save the individual. Sam didn't know what those words meant, sure. but they're hugely important to our policy in this country. The trolley problem, as it were. 
oh. is, a, is a question about I it. whether you're willing to kill a person to save five people. These are questions of deontology versus utilitarianism. Sam doesn't know those words. And I'm not saying it to be mean to him. It's not what sure. I'm not. Not everybody knows philosophy. But if I'm. <laughs> Tim Pool, Philosopher King. <laughs> yeah. Do you know the amount of terms you talk about for a living and claim to be an expert on that you have no idea what they mean? I mean, CRT is one of them. White privilege is another one. Apparently, a third one, and we just found this out today, is pro-choice. So, there we go. I'm trying to convey ideas. The only thing I can do is try to find common ground between us. Big movie just came out. Avengers. So if you don't understand deontology or utilitarianism, which is the academic approach, I can try the pop culture approach. See, I love pop culture references. Instead of, oh, actually, I know, you do. Yeah. Instead of actually addressing the substance this of the is issue, so funny. instead, Sam and many others just mocked the idea that I had to dumb down the concepts for him because he didn't get it. You hmm. see, this is a problem. If I approach in good faith Sam with a question about philosophy that he cannot understand because he doesn't know these terms, so I try to find common ground and he mocks me for it, what is my incentive to even try? <laughs> And he what does that have to do with something that you should take up with Sam? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, 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 and I'm your sure. therapist. Are you trying to say that I was doing that on the show? I think I was being very upfront and honest with you guys. I've given you guys my full blown opinions and everything. We've I, I, I agree. I appreciate you coming. I just my point is, I don't know how many times Seamus and I, who completely disagree on the issue of abortion, can try to explain to you legal terms, definitions, the body of a baby versus the body of a mother. I think you, you agree with more than you. How think do I have do. a conversation with you if you don't understand what we're saying? No, I do understand what you're saying. I'm, I'm, I, I don't like. I'm reiterating to you what my position is, and you just don't want to accept that as my position. Like I'm telling you in the most plainest words. Like when we say a baby has its own body, you say it's the mother's body, and we're like we're not talking about the mother's body. You say, but it's the mother's body. I'm like I don't know how many times we got to say it's the baby's body. Well, it's, if, baby's it's, body. if it's inside of her body as a fetus. Then it's whatever you're discussing, whatever you want to try to uh, go about from that uh, perspective or direction. The ultimate decision comes from uh, comes to the mother. Mm -hmm. I, well, I want to make I, I want to make one got... more. I just want to make one more statistical point because you didn't like that study it was from eighty eight. I found something newer. A twenty thirteen study published by the Guttmacher Institute states that data suggests that women, most women seeking later term abortions, are not doing so for reasons of fetal anomaly or life endangerment. Wait, what, but what how many how many women are having fetal abort? Uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, late term abortions. Period though. It, uh, it's well, it's well, an, an evil, horrific what, thing to what do. What year was that? That's 2013. Oh, 2013. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so I, I, I do kind of feel so. like if Seamus has made two references and you haven't made any, then you're in the weaker position. Okay. <laughs> like, so, see, my okay. attitude tends to be I am like, now the Thanos. If, if someone's like, like to me, to me, to me, this isn't like a thing where I'm trying to score points or win. I'm giving you guys what my position is. No, I respect. Um, I, look, I'm, to be, I'm not trying to score points either. Most of the show I haven't talked because I didn't want this to be like we're double teaming you. There were a few times no, where I wanted to jump in and yeah, but but with a couple, should have a couple statistical points. No, I'd be I'd be happy to do it again at some point. But there was just a couple statistical points that I really did feel I need to correct. Abortions at or after 21 weeks are uncommon and represent 1% of all abortions in the U.S. Typically, these procedures cost well over $1,000, excluding the cost of travel and lost wages. They normally require treatment over multiple days and are only performed by a subset of all abortion providers. Reasons individuals seek abortions later in pregnancy include medical concerns such as fetal anomalies or maternal life endangerment, as well as barriers to care and cause delays in obtaining an abortion. There you have it. I mean, I guess they're probably going to start saying things that, like, the, the CDC, uh, it doesn't count as a source. Let's look at the stats. The number, rate, and ratio of reported abortions has decreased, 1821 and 13% respectively. Uh, except in 2019, the total increased by 2%. The majority of the abortions, 99%, this <laughs> it's 1% it's, it's that are performed after that time. It's 1% that is performed at, like, the 8th or the ninth month. They're just lying to you. This is a really great example of why do people call me right wing? Let's let's let's. I think I, I don't know if we're going to get to the members only guys. We think we're just doing it right now. That's it. We're uh, giving it away. He's giving it away. Yeah. What, what makes me right wing? Well, make, well, you you say you advocate for these positions, but earlier I got you to say that you know if your position, um, if if the uh, you know you, you actually said that you preferred uh, if to stand next to me or the ending of Roe v. Wade. You prefer the ending of Roe v. Wade. No, I didn't say Roe v. Wade. I mean, you I said banning of abortion. Yeah. So you stand with the banning of abortion. Why? That's, you what tell was my me. reason? What was my you reason? tell me. Because you're in favor of terminating babies' lives at nine months. But you don't. You don't seem to care about the life of the mother. Oh, I do. No, but you don't. If you Why say, not? if you said you'd rather ban abortions, then kill what, babies. Then my position. Then you say the mother's life is worth less than the the, right. the, the see, grown see. the grown human's life is worth less than an unborn fetus. To you. No, no. But that is the position. Then they could they, deliver the baby. They could deliver what the baby. They they can, what if they cannot? What if they cannot? Then <laughs> I said time. the provision should be added that all efforts must be made to preserve. <laughs> 
This is a fucking hell of a stun lock. This is like one super chat now. It's been going on, I think, almost for like 42 minutes. <laughs> or, the baby, but, but your... they didn't add that. Well, we're not talking about, we're not talking about and provision so I said in your context, no, no. if the issue was you telling me a baby could be killed at the point of birth or banning abortion, I would choose banning abortion. I didn't say I wanted to ban abortion. I'm saying you, your you, position no, no. is so extreme. You've pushed me to the other side if that's my only option. Okay, but we're now using that hypothetical. That's what we're talking about now. You, you don't like, like hypotheticals. Do, I don't like hypotheticals, but you love philosophical discussion, so let's do it. Philosophical and hypothetical are two different things. Okay, well, let's do the philosophical then. You said before that um, you, can use you would rather stand with philosophy. people who want to ban all abortion than kill babies than and stand months. with my position. Sure, fine. So that means then that as a result, women who would die if they don't have an abortion would die. No, that uh, is the result of that. That no, is the result of no, that. I don't. I, I see. This is this is the point I was making before about your you, no. your inability to understand the argument. But okay, I'm, I'm playing by your rules now. So a woman is nine months pregnant. The 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 pregnancy needs to end now. What should they do? No, no but we're not talking about these specifics anymore, though. We're not talking. Your position was stand with me, who according to you has this position, and then number. Oh, you're like talking to a brick wall. How is it talking like a brick wall? I'm going by your own position. I have already said. If my choices are between someone saying end the life of a baby at nine months or no abortion at all, I would choose no abortion. Yes. That is, if there were two extremes, I would opt for the one that, for the most part, does not kill the baby. And in that... that now, hold on. Okay. Abortion, according to the CDC, terminates the life of the baby. If a woman's health is at risk because of a pregnancy... You do not need to kill the baby to save the woman. Right, and they don't do that if they can. If they, if they can save and give the birth and, to the child, that's what they do. And yeah. that's why my position was, they should just add a provision saying that to the bill. Otherwise, <laughs> it would allow for babies to be killed, and that's one of the issues oh I have God, with it. Okay, that's, that's also, a little bit different than what we discussed but, before. We have to go back probably and li listen to it, but we're not going to do that now. I understand we're just going to keep going in circles here. Yes, we're probably going to yes, move on to my yes. point. But your last statement is not true, that they don't do that. They do perform abortions at that stage. But that not, not... I mean, he cited two I've sources. Cited okay, two, yeah, I've yeah. cited actually three different sources of statistics on this. Right, but it's not and just like, oh, still I'm... still maintaining your position. But it's, not, but it's not just like, oh, I'm feeling depressed. There must be something that is... Actually, no, that's happened. Just a, a woman according to, according says, to oh, partial birth, I cited partial, partial birth abortion, as James McMahon said, that is the number one reason cited. Right, 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 depression. No, no, no. The, the, the primary reason given by those requesting the procedure is depression. But there's a difference between someone who's debilitating depression and then someone who's just, I'm sure. And, and wait, like, as in like, hey, I, I need to get an abortion because of depression. You're thinking like, oh. oh no, I'm not thinking that. Thing I think right. debilitating depression is a horrible thing. I don't think it necessitates killing an unborn child. I mean, I would have to leave that up to the woman and the doctor. I, well, I wouldn't because I think it's okay. wrong to kill right. people. And I don't and just leave that up to whoever's doing it or wants to do it. The the uh, traditional like oh, position sure, on abortion. Sure. Yeah, you care so much about preserving life, except uh, the moment that the baby is born. I mean, then after that, it's like you don't give two fucks. Well, why would we have I don't know a vast amount of social spending to help out uh, single mothers, uh, impoverished kids, uh, kids in marginalized communities? Why 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 do any of that? Why why have uh, a social structure that doesn't let people grow up in abject poverty so they have very hard times, very hard lives? Like, there's so much more that goes into. Not, well, no, this is just it. This it's this one. Way Wedge issue, basically in this one, you know, situation where I can really control women's bodies. Among Democrat voters has been, there's got to be some restrictions. Right, right, and there are. Your position is like, we should get rid of them. No, it's not my position. The, I think what we have right now works. I mean, you, you, you do. Yeah. I mean, states are banning abortion. Roe v. Wade and still Casey in play. Yeah. And like several states have, like Oklahoma, outright banned it. Not yet. No, no, they did. Not yet. You can't. No, no. Oh, oh, they, not until they, the decision comes down. They no, 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 no. Didn't Oklahoma, did they pass that bill already? I thought they did. We might double check. Yeah, where they... It can't go into effect, though, until... The Supreme Court decision. I mean, California's got, uh, they don't enforce immigration laws. Like, it doesn't matter what the federal government says. What are you talking about? We're talking about specifically in Oklahoma that's just... Okay, dude. Why did you bring up immigration just now? You made a point about how the federal government <laughs> made a restriction. I said there's examples of restrictions. Don't, they have no impact. What do you, you cannot make abortion illegal okay. outright in this country okay, right now. Bro. Roe v. Wade. KCV uh, Planned Parenthood. I know what this is. But, but. You're trying to stay on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you guys are having a good time, really. I mean, no, no, I'm, yeah. I'm giving you a hard time. I'm giving you a hard time. No, I, I appreciate it. I, I love this stuff. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's, it's been an interesting discussion. And it's good, you know, maybe, we maybe usually don't have Kansas. people on who, who, we usually don't have left-wing people on. Yeah. So, and it's not, it's not that we don't invite them, they usually don't come, but it's, you know, brave right. to come here. Should right. have Sam Cedar on. No, Sam, Sam. <laughs> he's offered, yeah. S Sam, no, Sam, he's, so he rescinded. When, when I uh, invited Sam on the show, he publicly accepted and then privately told me no. Well, I know, I know the whole situation. And I, I mean, published I, all the DMs. I, I, I mean, you don't need to dude, publish them with that me. That dude is a bad faith actor who he, the, the scam on Steven Crowder for internet oh, points. Great. Oh, yeah, great. Let's like not have a real conversation and just Well, that's scored. what Sam wanted to have. Yeah. Sam wanted Steven to Crowder's the one who ran. Crowder was going to talk to Ethan Klein. Right. And Sam intruded upon the conversation. Well, Ethan Klein invited him. But, and Steven didn't know. Well. 
So this is why. That's why it's like, funny. It's for one of the reasons we don't do uh, digital conversations because they're bad. Sure. They're always right. bad faith. Well, I got surprised when you opened that door. <laughs> no, we're dealing with security. We have no. Uh, maybe it was Kansas that outright banned it. Was it Kansas? Oh, there's, you know, uh, there was something that actually we brought the Sam thing, and I, I was something I meant to ask you actually. Um, you 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 did a video. Um, it's actually been on my mind for for a little bit now. You did a video when that happened, and you said Which something one? Which um, one? The, about the the Sam Cedar Crowder debate or yeah. that didn't happen, uh, where Ethan Klein invited Sam. And uh, there was something you said where I, I, I don't have it verbatim, but it was something like, uh, if your if your uh, if your viewers are wrestling fans, uh, they might remember when um, Stone Cold Steve Austin ruined Vince McMahon's big moment with Mike Tyson, and Vince McMahon started yelling, "You ruined it, Austin! You ruined it!" You had like a moment like that where yeah, you were screaming at like uh, Sam and Ethan that they, they ruined it. They ruined it. I don't know anything about wrestling. Okay, but uh, you, you maybe thinking of somebody else. No, no, no. I'm that was my. That was my anecdote. Oh, that was my oh, anecdote. Oh. You, you, was, oh, yeah, you said something. You said something like, you, "But what did they ruin?" I don't know what they ruined. Stephen Crowder wanted to have a real conversation with Ethan Klein, and Sam put on his clown nose and shut it down. But Ethan Klein never wanted to. Ne was never so a, he lied. A, yeah, sure. I mean, come on, dude. I mean, Ethan Klein look, doesn't do a Ethan Klein doesn't do a politics show. Look, I, I you know, it's it's it's. I, I know what Stephen the Crowder is a professional troll for a living who does that to other people and has his whole career. It happens to him, and all of a sudden it's like, oh, whoa, yeah, this is uh, really uncalled for. Or, oh, the left are so bad faith. Oh, I can't believe you would ever do this. And also, Ethan Klein didn't want to have a debate with Stephen Crowder. He's like, well, it's not my thing. I'm not a debater. But I know you have been running from Sam Cedar, so here he is. And now you can have yourselves a little conversation. The result of shows like who this was, are. Who was the who was the um, who was the the networks that you mentioned that blacklist Sam? Oh, I'm not going to talk about that publicly on air. Right. I, I think oh, I know okay. who it is, but there's, yeah. there's, there's a handful. Um, yeah, Sam's blacklisted from, yeah. from a few places be, surprised because he's a bad actor. Oh, so like I've, I'm, I'm, I have spoken with people and I've asked them and they have said, this is why we won't engage with him. Well, I'm sure they think he's a bad actor. I mean, he, he last Bro, me. the Steven Crowder thing was like, that's the kind of thing that gets you removed from bookings. Well, bookings with who? Networks. <laughs> Networks like uh, who? So... Unfortunately, I am no longer allowed to be on the Daily Stormer. It really sucks. It's hurting me. Breitbart, you know, won't return my calls. Newsmax, oh man, it's hard. AOC, or sorry, OAC, yeah, the, the, the OWN network. It's, uh, uh, it's just not, not working out for me. I know you can't mention, okay. You're trying right, to, right, right, look. Right, right, no, I'm not trying to, I'm actually not trying. It was a legit interest um, in terms of what you were talking let's about. Say, let's say big shows, well-funded shows, typical mainstream like shows. Like on the right, uh, mainstream shows. Mainstream shows. Not like on TV? Mainstream shows okay. across the board okay. without me Could getting in trouble because right, right, I'm right, right. So you're not really doxing but, uh, anyone. Bro, that, that stunt with uh, with Ethan was like, I can't believe he pulled that off. I can't believe he did that. And that's that's a career, it's, a career, it's a career ender. Well, he's still going. There, it's there was, there, it's I mean, a career I mean, for sure, <laughs> in his space. Uh, he's got his own YouTube channel. He did. His, his subs spiked so fast and hard after that happened, and Steven Crowder's went down. So I'm pretty sure what happened there was not exactly a career ender. Insulated in that regard. But like, it was way worse for Sam Cedar's career when he got falsely accused of pedophilia by Mike Serenovich. That's like that's stuff that can get you fired and, and, and it was very damaging uh, and based on a tweet that he tried to take out of context. Blacklist yourself when you tell people, look, we can have a conversation, we can have an argument, we can get heated. We even had people smack the microphone in rage. Well, I didn't even do that. Not, wow. not even you. And we've invited that guy back. We were like, bro, we get it. Things get heated. You're always welcome back on because that's not. But Sam's stunt was like not just for me, but a bunch of other people like. That's not a guy you have on your show. Mm -hmm. because I was just interested in that, really, just out of my curiosity, truthfully. Just if, wanted to know what you meant by it. So uh, there are a lot of channels that focus on inter, interpersonal, intercommentary drama. We do a little bit. We, we mostly try to avoid it unless it's overwhelming. Like Joe Rogan controls the news cycle sometimes, so we'll talk about him. But I don't, I don't address every single thing every time someone talks about me or anything like that. Uh, when you do too much, and I always give this advice to people who are starting channels, avoid intercommentary drama. Like if, if, you're, if you've got 100K subs and there's another personality who's on the left or the right and they've got 100K subs, Ignore them. Because if you start doing these conversations where it's like, did you hear what so-and-so said about me? Did you hear what so-and-so did? Which is what a lot of people do. It, what happens at higher, le higher industry levels, they, they basically say, we don't, we don't, we don't, we don't want any of that. So that's like, advertisers don't like that. That's interesting because like, you kind of sort of respect them that Sam Cedar wouldn't censor himself in that way. What do you mean? I mean, you said that if you have one channel that's like 100K, another channel 100K, and you're, on, you're one of those channels, you should not you know, go after well, be yourself, or- be yourself. Like if, if well, you, if well, that you, was Sam Cedar being himself. For sure, for sure. If, if Sam, and I, I'm not saying he has, doesn't have the right to choose this. Right. I'm saying the result of it has been blacklisting. So there's been, so you're saying is to get on those other channels, there's been a lot of people who self-censor themselves. No. So uh, there are a lot of people who do this. I'm saying if you're looking for a career, if you want uh, to reach a higher level, you want... <laughs> Is the answer Steven Crowder? Is that the answer? Is this like, and he's no longer allowed on Steven Crowder's show now? Personally, I think Sam's at a point where he knows exactly where his career is, and I think he's just, for sure yeah, he's got a million yeah, subs. Yeah. I mean, he's probably super right. rich. No, he's actually. I mean, I think you know. I think when I mean he knows where his career is, I don't think I'm. I'm not saying like he's in some great position. What I'm actually saying is uh, he knows that he has a point that he has hit, 
And that's where he's going to go based on his own content because he doesn't pull any punches. He'll do whatever that he feels like he wants to do. So and he doesn't, um, you know, he doesn't self censor himself just not to go after someone in terms of being worried. But we're about not talking about self censorship. Well, I mean, it is sort of self censorship in a way if you don't want to go after someone specifically because you're worried about not getting put on your show. I agree with that, and that's not what I'm talking about. So what oh. I'm saying is. If your goal is to have a, like, you want to talk about the news, you want to talk about concepts, ideas, and events, you got to avoid the interpersonal drama. Well, a lot of what Sam goes after when it comes to interpersonal drama, it's not really like, inter it's not personal in the sense of like, oh, he was mean to me. Like, he commonly, he regularly does videos on, you know, Jimmy Dore, Dave on Dave Rubin, because he, dis he disagrees vehemently with what they, what they put out. Every one of those videos you could look up. And sure, he mocks them and they have fun with it. That's sort of like the point of the show. It's sort of like an old school, like leftist version of Howard Stern or something, I guess you can say. But um, you know, I suppose they, they, mock, they mock these guys, but they always go after, like they're not like making fun of how Dave Rubin uh, 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 quaffed his hair or whatever. The, you know, he's not there making fun of uh, Jim, uh, Jimmy Dore's young glasses Turks, or whatever. Well, we're not the Young Turks. No, I know. Um, I'm, just, I'm, I'm dragging them and everything. Right? Sam goes after them and always... So he doesn't go after any drama. How are we doing here? Jordan Peterson says, no fat chicks to swimsuit illustrated rage quits Twitter. That seems a little drama-y. Uh, Elon Musk, Biden disinformation. Taylor Lorenz says Biden went to the right wing disinformation board. That seems a little bit drama. Elon will vote for the GOP for the first time. He's itching Democrats. Uh, okay, it's a little closer. Here's Matt Binder. Um, AOC and the whole squad vote for the war in Ukraine. Tim Pool debunks leftist memes. Congressional candidate fights back against corrupt dem restricting. Well, it's political. Conservatives go to judges will not back down on road decisions. CNN will uh, focus on truth in a sad statement. Um, going after other media figures there. Jon Stewart embodies the woke collapse of late night comedy. It's not really a politician. Kind of going after drama there. Amazon meltdown over kids' books by Matt Walsh. Kind of kind of going for drama there too, Tim. Makes it about the substance of what they say and their policy. Um, when he intruded on Crowder, he didn't just do it to go like, ah, surprise. He wanted to have a legit discussion about uh, COVID-19 policy. Um, he was supposed to have a conversation with Crowder. This is why people like Crowder won't have conversations with him. Yeah. Well, he wouldn't have a conversation before Oh, Sam wow, it was Crowder. And, and this is exactly why. But Sam didn't that do that mean. before. No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's an issue of tendencies, personality, and the things he's done. Like... So that stunt, I know, resulted in like big shows being like, right. yeah, I'm sure. not that guy, man. Right. Because, like, look, yeah, so. Yeah, banned from the networks. That's pretty well, cool. Well, I don't know. I'm not going to say every. I, I can't speak for every person. Sam bad. <laughs> <laughs> what, what people with bigger shows are looking <laughs> That's for a good call is out. prestige. <laughs> you can't want the record line about this. Substance. So you want to be authoritative, not elite. Is he, like, is he you banned create by Fox of News? That, people, that can help people in their daily lives. When you see a stunt like what Sam did, the, the presentation is that this guy doesn't address issues that people relate to. The, the stunt with Steven Crowder was a tribalist stunt, which plays well to... Remember when Crowder canceled and used his pregnant wife as an excuse because Sam ended their show early? I feel like that's get for, that gets forgotten. It would be really nice if Matt brought that up. I wonder if he's going to in the like... Culture warriors, the time which are a remains. very small portion of the marketplace. If you're trying to do a show that speaks to regular Americans, is either influencing policy, sharing your ideas, or just, you know, addressing issues that more people care about, doing stunts... And interpersonal drama diminishes that and makes people not want to engage, which makes the people at other shows say, look, what we want to do here at Timcast IRL is share ideas, even yours, with as many people as possible. Sure. We can't accomplish that with someone like Sam Cedar, so we don't have him on the show. Well, why wouldn't we be able to accomplish that with him? If you, if you invited him here. He's a stunt guy. He's a stunt guy. But he wouldn't be a stunt guy. Yes, he will. If you, uh, if when, he I came tweeted, here? when I tweeted, come on the show, he publicly says, I'll do it, then privately says, no, I won't. Well, that was because. A stunt. That was because. He played us to get clicks, I, and then went, woo, look at me, I and he wasted my time. I think was a misunderstanding time. due oh, to the please. COVID situation. Honestly, I if you invited him now, I bet he would come. I bet he would come if you invited him now. Because this is what he does for attention. He's a bad faith actor. Right. who, when I said, we'll fly you out and cover all the costs, he said, how does this day work? I said, you got it. I'll DM you for details. And then he privately says, I ain't doing it. Hassan did the same thing. Bro. Well, I'm glad you invited me. And I came on. Hassan never agreed to come to the compound. That's I, like that's a complete lie. Uh, Hassan Piker uh, said that he'll debate him uh, anytime. It just has to be on Zoom because he doesn't want to go to his place. And that was during the series of where like a lot of lefties were like, hey, he's like, no, no one on the left ever wants to engage. And then like, it was just like, blah, 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 blah. You know, like so many people. And then he was like, oh, well, you have to come to my compound. And, and then everyone's like, why? Did you can do Zoom calls. I've seen you do it with Ben Shapiro. And now I guess we're finding out that this is some lore. The reason being is that he believes uh, it's just never good faith. It's never good faith. Yeah. Sam Cedar didn't do a gotcha to him. He just embarrassed him. 
like I'm talking about Tim Pool that in their debate that's that's all that happens it's a very embarrassing spectacle of what Tim Pool did when he was trying to revert to Marvel films and, and be like well I actually know a lot more about these terms and philosophy and if you didn't know this you're actually like the character Thanos in the Marvel film he's like yeah this is cartoon nonsense what are you saying like I don't care I, I don't care what, what you what super villain you want to compare me to and Absolutely. I know, you know, and I would, uh, you know, and uh, I think it was a good discussion. I do, and I think we've gone way too long. I think I got to end it. Matt, it really was great. I really do appreciate you coming. You are welcome back anytime. Oh, we'll, well, thank we'll, you. We'll have you on with other people. Um, if you ever have any ideas for anyone you want to talk to, we, we are all, all, I'd love to have, you know, debate someone, you know, who's got like a stronger, you know, uh, political I ideology or something. We did Charlie Kirk and Vosh, you know, oh, let, yeah. for the most part, had them have their conversation. I saw the poster. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that we, made, we made that poster <laughs> for them. And uh, I'll tell you this, man, in all honesty, we invite people on the left all the time. They won't do it. Oh, well, I'll do it anytime. We'll have you on again, dude. I really appreciate it. For everybody who watched, look, we got crazy, man. I'm sorry about the super chats. Um, and I we appreciate didn't all even them. really get to the the, the, the shooting over the weekend. We, we, we argued too much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's that's really bad. I, yeah. I apologize for that too. Um, but this is what usually happens, and then everyone's like, half the people are saying it's time, it's done. Half the people are saying no, keep going. And I'm just like, it's 11:30. <laughs> We're an hour and a half over. We're not going to get a member segment, and basically consider the member segment free. Uh, support us at TimCast.com. We're going to have more shows like this, more more questions, more debates. And we'll we'll try and do better and better each time we do it. And uh, bring a friend. We'll we'll you know we'll have you come on with somebody else. Bring a friend. Yeah, yeah. Find somebody. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that would actually be good. Well, no, I, 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 <laughs> I, I think that's a good idea. Sam? Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that's a good idea because like there were a lot of parts of the discussion I wanted to jump into. I jumped into a couple of them because I really felt the need. But for the most part, it was like I didn't. I really didn't want this to become two on one. No, I think so. I fun. think it would be great. I think it would be great if you like brought another person sure. to back up. What, what, what then we could be really loud, and then this could go until four in the morning. And we. I mean, sometimes my own stream might go on for hours and hours. We've been doing them now. Yeah, I mean, sometimes we go deep into the night. Like talking about one of uh, me and Matt are uh, debating uh, Adam and Sitch on Tuesday about the libs of TikTok. Um, and I'll ask Matt, I'll be like, yo, maybe you can bring me to the compound. I, I, I want to I live in the beanie. Morning, two in the morning sometimes. Um, you know, if, if you were open to it, I could certainly promise you on my own that, you know, Sam Cedar would behave with me here if I it's, brought him. It's, it's not about behavior. It's about, I think, his Don't do it unless you'll never make it up to the compound. <laughs> well, that's interesting. Yep. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, like we'll invite you on the show. Yeah, and we'll have a conversation. Although I won't I lie, think, you know, he uh, I'm I'm not as ex uh, successful as Vosh. So if Tim Pool is the person who pays for flights and all that kind of stuff, that would that would go a long way. I would I would prefer to do it on Tim Pool's dime. Shock jocks. Mm -hmm. So like this, the Stephen Crowder. I bet DGG will sim for Adam's this. They always his do. His goal is to like woo 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 to his base. My goal is to like bring you on in front of my base and say like here's a dude who's got some ideas. Let's hear him. His moral we'll consistency is, is siding with the side like, that's against the Thanos thing is a really great example of like. If a guy doesn't understand philosophy and I try to relate to him so he mocks me for it, that's not good faith. Like, making an argument about me trying to relate to you is bad faith. Right. Oh, I'm not going to entertain that. You want to just hit me? I, you know, the, the original, uh, I know you want to end the show, I'm sorry, but it just hit me right now. Um, you know, I thought that's not, I thought you said, do you want to just hit me? No, that's, <laughs> what, that's what I heard. I, mean, I was like, right here, buddy. Right I thought now. you were like joking. I didn't know. No, no, no. You, you want to just hit me right now? You know, when, when you reached out to me and we, we uh, reconnected to make this happen, it was over like the, the, li the, the libs of TikTok stuff. Yeah. Right, right. Oh. And you brought that, we didn't even get to talk about that because I actually, um, since we last discussed this, I actually went ahead and I did the work. I made FOIL requests, uh, Freedom of Information requests. Oh, wow. And um, I have uh, all the information in terms of where she has lived, like her home address. And I can confirm that the information that she has given to public record, which is where all that information you see online would come from, she has never lived at that address that was on that real estate license. According to who? According to who? According to New York State. So I have from New York State that she did. I also have personal sources who've confirmed it. You should show me because I, I'll uh, show you. you I, can't show, I can't show them. <laughs> Check this shit out. All the communists in chat, don't be scared. Do you want to kill Joe Biden? <laughs> oh, you have some weird assumptions about what you think communism is. <laughs> Communism is when murdering the president. Voter records. Huh? I have um, uh, donation records in terms of a uh, political campaign she donated to. I have the, in case you're wondering, oh, okay, that maybe just shows, uh, you know, doesn't prove it without a shadow of doubt. Did Taylor Lorenz publish an address? Did Taylor Lorenz, she published a address in Who's a address? Yes. She published a business address for that real estate company. And where did Libs of TikTok work? Not there. She at that TikTok. time, she was not living there, no. She did oh, not. I'm so I mean, happy he's finally calling him out on this. She was not working there at the time that article was published, no. So you're saying Taylor Renz did publish an address? In the link that was originally right. posted. That's, that's without a doubt. They'll, I mean, they'll okay. even... So we, what, dis what we disagree saying, beyond that, but we agree she doxed her. Well, she didn't live there. Or well, she, well, she, 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 didn't is, even, is she actually, she actually didn't even work there. Either. Is publishing an address doxing? Is publishing an address doxing? Not, no, not if it's not connected to that person. It, so it's her it's, it's her company, right? She's listed it's as not, No, it's not her company. Bro, you're trying so hard. No, 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 I'm not trying Taylor so hard. <laughs> <did>. <laughs> like, there's, there's no reach. No, Tim. <laughs> Bro, you're reaching so hard. It's just like, no, you, you, you were just misinformed. These are the actual facts of the matter. There's a big difference between those two things. Bro, I have, I have direct sources who have confirmed it. Conf who? 
you want me to expose the sources? Well, did you hear it from? You could just you don't have to explain. Did you hear it from? Yeah. Why do you keep Why do you keep doing this thing where you're like I I know I have actual information. Sam Cedar is blacklisted on a lot of major shows, and he's like, oh, so TV networks. I can't say, but I have to protect my sources on this one. It's like, so, hey, by the way, you posted this. You tweeted this out. I remember when Tim Pool did it, and you got really mad, along with a lot of other conservatives, that apparently uh, her company was being doxxed in the original Washington Post article. Uh, that was an old place she used to work at, and she didn't work there any uh, anymore at the time. And then they since removed it. But but you lied about that, Tim. One person who would be able to probably give you the outright answer lives of TikTok. I will not confirm or deny the identity of the source who gave me well, key I have, information. Until the after show, so pay Sign if you want to see it. I mean, I also have uh, the the uh, the uh, details for every person who has lived there over the past 10, 12 years. So do we. Yeah, it's good. And I also have the uh, the uh, mortgage on the building, and I have the deed to the building, none of which she's connected to whatsoever. Why did they remove the address? Why did they remove the address? Because they decided that it was irrelevant to the story because she didn't Why did work. they deny posting the address? I don't know why they did that. I don't know. I can't tell you. They posted that an address they, where she was listed as working, where she was listed at li as living no, according to public uh, records. But she's not living where there. I have where sources say she did. And uh, there you go. So, I mean, bro, you, you want to argue the semantics on you should, could you, you could <laughs> Offline, I would love if you show me the information you have. Like once we end the show, I would love for you to show that to me. I will pull it up. And I could show, I actually brought the, you know, I could show you the, <laughs> Let's wrap things up. Show yeah, you I know, I, I, I just, this happens all the time where like before a show, I'll assume we're going to talk about some things and do some research. And then like we this conversation goes yeah, in so right. many different directions, yeah. basically every episode. Yeah. Right. But we'll, we'd love to chat with you. Yeah. Guys. Everybody smash the like button. Uh, there's your free extra. Hour. Is um, the Freedom Tunes guy, is he the Jack Murphy replacement? If you don't know, Jack Murphy was kind of like a men's rights advocate, also grip strength advocate who used to be on Tim Shul all the time. Said a lot of super yuxy things back in the day, by the way. Uh, he would talk frequently. Uh, oh, there's that one clip online of him talking about the age of consent. Uh, lowering it, of course, all this weird shit. Anyways, turns out Jack Murphy in the past had had some activity, uh, I believe, uh, being uh, an open cuck and wrote an article about being an enjoying cucking. Uh, and uh, he got roasted alive for that by every single other person on the internet uh like the quartering roasted him geeks and gamers roasted him like everyone just turned on him and then tim made this whole kind of like you know i'm i'm gonna you know i don't care about the drama i'm gonna stand up for him and then now he's gone what what happened is he oh he was just a guest but he was a frequent guest he would he would be oh you're talking about the freedom tunes guy um because i was like jack murphy used to be in so many episodes just as the third person kind of just like sitting back there but now it's now it's the freedom uh the freedom tunes guy with the the laptop Hour and a half. Yeah. I'm sorry, with super chats, and they got nuked, and then we, we just argued too much. So you're welcome, Tim Cast viewers. It was all on me. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, but we'll just consider the members only having been free for this one around. And uh, Lord, like he's mining on the moon. Help support us. Go to timcast.com. Sign up. Support our journalists. Support our infrastructure. Support our work. And you no, can... that wasn't a cucking joke. He he was literally into cucking. He wrote articles. I'm not I'm not just like talking on my ass. This is not a bit. He wrote art. This is why they got so mad at him. They weren't mad about all the other yikesy things that he would do, like the age of consent stuff. But like it, it turns out that was like conservatives. No, they they couldn't. Stand for that they're like what this guy talks about like you know men's rights you know this kind of stuff and uh, he's a literal cock you know follow the show at timcast irl you can follow me at timcast matt do you want to shout anything out yeah sure follow me on twitter at matt bender and uh you know all my details are on that we didn't even talk about cryptocurrency oh my god oh, there's the there's oh, i disagree there's there's nothing problematic about uh being a cuck if that's like the thing you're into that's just like that's that's some people enjoy doing that um it's uh it's problematic if you spend your entire life making up this false or like faux per persona about being a manly man who has to have the grip strength and i only believe in like you know sex after marriage and all this kind of you know shit then what can i say do you enjoy the surfs but prefer not to have to use your eyeballs many are saying this well we've got the solution for you it's the surf times in podcast form Available on most major podcasting networks now. If you enjoy it, please consider leaving a good review and feedback because it really helps the show out, apparently, and it's free. Just like the podcast. To our gods, Xander Corvus and Peyton L. Just, we are prepared to embark on a mighty jihad in your name. To our monarch, Tom Spiker, we are but your humble jester, attempting in vain to get you to laugh. To our valiant knights of the round table, Benji Arney, Tech Tink, Scary. Earth Human, Tony, DM Rivera, Resident Scarecrow, Sir Nickus, Mayred, Cheryl Alvarez, Ruby Kelly, Brandon, Words Greenwood, It doesn't matter what I believe, it only matters what I can prove, Hagbird Celine, Matthew Scarborough, Stellar Vision, Marianne McCarthy, Daniel Sutton, Coulter Smith, Jenna Tao, Quiet185, Anna Loves Riley, Omni, Riley and Anna, Poodlehawk, 
The Tim Caucus, Multi Mondi, Trevbot, EXE, Brian Ephraim, Lemmy101, Anthropophojack, Saren42, Catherine, Ramon Acosta, Incosin, Agent NDN, Violent Orchard, Political Puppy, La Media Panza, Zach Christensen, Todd Buckingham, and Todd Lajeunesse. We raise our mugs and salute our brave heroes off to another glorious conquest.